What is up, folks? You're listening to the Texture Pod podcast. I'm professionalism at its finest. I am your host, uh, Chris Acharya. <laughs> I don't know. Pause I was... for a moment there. I'm yeah, not I tried to think of something clever. Nothing was coming out, and I said, uh, fuck it, I don't have time for this. Uh, it's, <laughs> I have so much shit to do. And all that happened in the span of a few seconds. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot I, of thinking to do I, in a small I amount think, of time. I think very quickly. I'm your host, Chris Acharya, and I'm joined, of course, by my compatriots, Sam Callahan. I am alive and not dying this week, kind of. Thank God. And <laughs> wait till next week; it'll start all over again. Damn it! Uh, and then also Brandon Carey. Oh my God! It's an anime game. Uh, that's just, I don't know that's just Brandon's life right now. <laughs> well, he needed an anime RPG. We've been we've been too busy talking about anime fighters. We've... Yeah, so we need to mix up our anime. You just. Yep. Uh. Our good buddy Garrett Glaze, he's been feeling a little bit under the weather, although he might be That's putting he might it mildly be from the reports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, we always wish he gets well soon. And of course, if, you know, he shows up, hey, that's even great. Just hopefully he that's keeps even dim great. fluids up. Even great. <clears throat> even greater. Okay. So, moving right along, uh, our news stories. First up, uh, Batman Arkham Knight season pass for forty fucking dollars. Yes, let's, let's go right into it. Cause fuck it. Oh god. Um. Cause fuck that shit. Yeah. Uh, season passes I've always found to be garbage. And granted, uh, I have bought the last couple of ones I've bought were from Nintendo, and they've seemed to be doing a pretty good job with both Mario Kart Eight and Hyrule Warriors. So I haven't had too much to complain about there. But I've seen too many times where season passes turn out to be garbage. And uh, I can't it's... think of one example, Chris. You must be using my hyperbole there. <laughs> A good amount of them. I think there was actually like Saints Row. There was one where first thing came out and people were like, yeah, that's not that great. So, but yeah. <laughs> So essentially, Warner Brothers is saying you get six months of content for Arkham Knight for forty dollars season pass. Content, yeah, yeah. And at first, because uh, this broke last week, and at first they didn't really say anything what you <laughs> what you'll be getting. Although, of course, they didn't. <laughs> and considering the track record that Warner Brothers has had, a lot of people already went out to say that it's probably going to be crucial content. Uh, because, uh, of course, immediately the thing that got brought up was when Arkham Woman. City... Yep, and they cut out the Catwoman missions, but... Which, depending on how... Depending on whether or not you thought of that was crucial to the story, whatever, <sighs> but it still seemed kind of shit that we gotta have some kind of online pass system so we can't... So we can stick it to them used game buyers, but... But this, uh... You know, they came out and they said, quote... We've heard from our community that you want more information on what we'll be delivering in the season pass. While we aren't ready to unveil every aspect of the content, we'll be developing. Excuse me. We'll be developing. We would like to share more detail now to give you a better sense of the scope of the season pass. I mean, when it comes to a project timeline and how these games get made today, the fact that you plan this much bullshit in advance before your game is even shipped. Like, but yeah, fuck you, Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's just it all sounds kind of gross. Yeah, I think it's partly that, and then I didn't realize this at first when all the outrage started. Is that I forgot the season passes normally aren't forty dollars, even though they're, they're usually slowly, only twenty five. But they're slowly getting there. Like the Call of Duty season pass is like forty bucks. God. Um, or it's like fifty or something like that. But the point being, I. Th- like, well, I initially thought it was just over the price is why people are angry. And then I realized it's because you're asking me to pay $40 for and something that... And the game's that, not even out yet. Well, it's not even that. It's like when it first the thing first came out, it's you asked me to pay $40 for just a mystery box. For like, I don't know, it'll be something that I'll hopefully like. like and that, that's like the real stickler here that people got pissed about is the idea that it's like you're asking me to pay money for something that you won't even tell me what it is. Yeah, I mean, no game. No game. Is worth a hundred cunting dollars. No Without game. knowing what it is. No, absolutely not. I'd and pay a hundred dollars for a couple of games, but you know, 
I would have I mean, played them first before I, I mean, Yeah, that. I would have to, like, play a demo and be like, this is the best game ever. Yeah. I mean, for 40 bucks is... Like, it's a lot of money. Mov- that's moving into, like, a fucking expansion at that point, you know? Yeah. That's like, like, I mean, that's, like that's like stand that's like either low budget game or like standalone expansion territory. Yeah. Instead of just like, you know, what we normally associate season passes with, which were a couple of missions. I mean I could fucking buy Divinity Original Sin for forty bucks, but Or you could but, just yeah. have a couple of Bat well, Batgirl missions instead. Oh, so let me read you uh the details that they provided about what this includes. Batgirl, a matter of family, an all-new prequel story expansion in an entirely new location, where you play as Batgirl for the very first time in the Arkham series, check out the first render of Batgirl. And again, I'm just kind of reading this verbatim on this, and, uh, you know, she looks okay, but again, it's like, is this really going, because usually when you think of, like, DLC missions, it's like something that will probably only last, like, what, 30 minutes? I would say, and, like, maybe an hour if you're good. Yeah. yeah. Hour and a half if you're super lucky. Or, like, something you paid, like, $10 for, but... Yeah. It's uh, like, here's, but, like, two missions where the character looks kind of different and might have, like, a different ability. The Season of Infamy. Play as Batman in all-new story missions featuring legendary supervillains invading Gotham City with new story arcs, missions, and gameplay that features. That seems something that should be already in the game. Like, yeah, oh, like yeah, by that... the way, Batman fights supervillains. Because yeah, uh, he's... It's, it's also, kind of, it's also kind of funny that they say that as if it's some kind of revolutionary idea for the series when every single game is here's a menage of enemies that you have to fight. Yeah. yeah that's Like every single Arkham game has been here's a bunch of supervillains to fight. Like, and they play that off like look at this exclusive DLC. It's like that's what every game is in this series. It's nothing new or different. Yeah, it's, like... it's probably like they took out, it's, it sounds like you took out a chunk of like yeah, in-game it, content if, and yeah. said any of these pay packs 40 sound bucks like, for it. If any of these packs sound like cut content and it'd be that one because it's probably like here's some villains that were side quests before and now they're just dlc gotham city stories play as batman's key allies in narrative missions extending their storylines from both before and after the events and batman arkham knight like that it's probably like that, nightwing or something i'd guess i don't know but like it, like as i remember seeing the trailer for arkham knight and i was supposed to be like here's some fucking co-op combo attacks and shit and i'm like again it just sounds like shit that like, isn't this what you're already trying to sell me the game for? And for people who are already starting to question Arkham Knights, like, there's pe- there are a lot of people who are Arkham fans, but, like, you know, I've already played through three Arkham games. I'm not sure if I want another one yet. That is exactly this, where I'm at right now. Because well, there are a lot of people like that, and they're sitting there wondering, now, that's kind of making it my proposition seem worse, honestly. I mean, I I was kind of titillated by the idea simply because... This is going to be, like, next-gen exclusive. Like, there's not going to be a fucking PS3 360 version of this. Yeah. This straight up, Correct. like, PC, PS4, X-Bone only. I mean, uh, the thing is, though, is, like, did you guys play Arkham Origins? I did, I have yes. not yet. I have it on my Steam okay. account. Because what I've seemed to notice is that the people who are more uh, or less interested in this game tend to be the ones who have played Origins because that was just, like, I'm witnessing the fall of this series and I'm getting really tired by the same combat the same side quest. Although I had played Origins really shortly after I played Arkham City, like like a couple matter of days yeah. afterwards. Yeah, I played them each as they came out. And even uh, then I was just tired of it. Oh, this this is the goofiest one about this whole thing. Legendary Batmobiles with themed tracks drive the most iconic Batmobiles from Batman's 75 year history on custom built race tracks each theme to that Batmobile specific era. Every Batmobile will be drivable across every racetrack. Okay, so... So I'm paying for skins. Yeah. Th- skins th- my... and racing missions that no one's probably going to want anyway. Like, my question there is, the way they say you could play these across different racetracks makes me feel like you're not going to include this in the actual main game itself. Of, like, like if I want to straight up play you know, the iconic Adam West Batmobile, which everybody remembers. The fucking double bubble seats that it had. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. but Ubisoft has kind of ruined the whole iconic word for me, so you just want to, like... Oh, you, I, want to, you want to talk about the iconic cap? N- no, oh, I no. don't, but, like, Ubisoft kind of ruined that whole word for yeah, me. But, I no but longer... Like, 
I, I check out when you say <laughs> I no longer iconic. I no longer feel anymore because of Trust Ubisoft. Trust me, Batmobile is a lot more iconic. No, I, but... I, I know I know what you mean, but like it just the word is it's bit it's tainted. poison it's poison but, now. Yeah, but like given the way I've seen like DLC work in the past and the way they describe it here with the Batmobiles, it almost sounds as if you get these iconic uh, different versions of the Batmobile that's been seen throughout you know various movies, comics, TV shows, what have you, but are you only going to be able to play those on those tracks, or can you actually drive around Gotham City in the main game with them? I would have to imagine you can use them anywhere. I don't yeah. see why they really, I do I don't wonder see that if, of skins like that. That doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah. what I do wonder, though, if it's going to be an Arkham City situation where you have to beat the game once before you can actually change oh. any of the skins. See, that sounds shitty. Yeah, they did that in Arkham City, and it was it sucked because you entered that situation where, like, I played it on 360, and then when I played it on PC, it's like, I want to play with the skins. You can't, because you have to beat the game. And I was like, but when I, mean, I beat the game, I don't want to play it again immediately. Granted, they do they do the kind of New Game Plus thing where, like, you can keep all your shit and start over again if you want. So, I mean, that's that's kind of incentive. But, but yeah, it, it's like, you do all this pre-order stuff, and then it's like, I can't even use this content until I beat the game once. Like, fuck. Um, and to kind of briefly describe the last two, Prime Fighter Challenge Maps. Engage in a series of new challenge maps utilizing the unique gameplay styles of Batman and his allies, which that was a thing that they've always done in the past. Yeah, just uh, fight rooms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and those are kind of okay. Uh, I, kind of I actually like them quite a bit, personally, so, you know. Yeah, uh, sure, I haven't had a problem. Whatever. I, I kind of like the leaderboard aspect of those, to where it's like trying to get my score, but... But of course, it wouldn't be an Arkham game without character skins, a variety of skins from across the eras for Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and Catwoman. Stay tuned for my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet explaining which store you have to go to (laughs) to get which skin. Yeah, because that was the thing with Arkham City that was just such Uh, shit. I remember looking at that when it came out. It was like, all right, you go to Walmart, you get this one. You go to GameStop, this one, Amazon, this one. It was the target this one, and then the Watch Dogs did the same thing, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. The the whole there was a whole fucking like Wikipedia article about it. Yeah. That's, and the thing is, that's just bad. I mean, and the thing is, especially when it comes to Warner Brothers, is that this, you know, the season pass. Obviously, I don't think it's worth it. You know, not just because of what what they describe here, but to me. They, Warner Brothers has had a track record of kind of putting out their quote-unquote game of the year or complete edition of the game later on. Yeah, so, they've done that with each game. If I Maybe Arkham Asylum didn't have one, but the other two did, if I remember correctly. Arkham Asylum did have one. Yeah. It, it totally go. did. And, and I'm also pretty sure Origins maybe also did that. Yeah, and but, I know City did because it was huge. And, of course, even with, like, the fighting games, like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, both of them did, like, the complete slash ultimate edition of, like, yeah. Here's, yeah. here's a game with all the DLC. It's know? kind of funny that that's, like, the weird part about season passes, is you're almost less incentivized to get them if you're just willing to wait. Yeah. And like, yeah. like, any game that has a really strong season pass that they feel passionate about, they'll put out a game of the year edition of it. Shout out Mordor is getting one. Yeah. It's so. just, it's bizarre, almost, because it's, like, all this pre-order incentive, and then right after it comes out, it's, like, as long as you didn't get it beforehand, you might as well just wait. Yeah, it, it, and I remember Jim Sterling made a tw- comment on Twitter, it, it was all, like, uh, you, it, proving it once again that you you bought an incomplete product on launch day. Yeah, essentially. Like, you, you, it's like people really are suckers if you buy it day one, especially in the case of, like, games that get put on PC and console because Mortal Kombat X, I'd already made up my mind of I'm not buying that until the quote unquote complete collection comes out and has I mean, like everything. Yeah. I'm not buying it on PC because it didn't work for a week well, and my understanding is it still doesn't yeah. work. I I have heard that it's playable <coughs> now, but yeah, Excuse when me. it launched on PC, it was fucking broken. Yeah, you literally could not play the game. Like it was broken in the most spectacular way. It crashed the game if you hit anything. Yeah, so it seems like, Which is again, incredible. if you wait, not only will you have the quote-unquote full game at a decent, more reasonable price, but they'll probably have whatever kind of like bugs and glitches probably worked out by then. At least they should. I don't know, so. I mean, I, I played Fuse. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> can't trust it all the time. Well, we did play Fuse. Sam, but... that is the most perfectly programmed game ever. I can't <laughs> believe you would say that about that, that's Fuse. That's true. That part, oh... 
it's whatever. Yeah, that doesn't require for, that's a patch. For that's for later. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this other other than yeah, it is gross. You are a sucker if you're paying a hundred bucks for this whole game. It's forty dollars. Really, you know, it's going to be a game of the year edition anyway. You yeah. really are wasting your time if you even if you buy the game on launch. You might as well wait for the game of the year edition, honestly. Yep. You know, I if suppose, you give a uh, shit. I suppose I just kind of want to play Devil's Advocate because, like a year ago, I did write an article about this where I said why I buy games at launch. And one of the things that does bum me out is that everything tells you you should wait, obviously, for bug fixes or complete editions. And I said the only bummer about that is I really love the idea of buying a game minute one and then being a part of like the big frenzy of activity. Yeah, like, that's the there, fun part about buying games. Like, do you want to people like, that, oh, let's play this game, like, the first day it comes out, and let's talk like about the, the beginning of the game. Yeah. There is also the argument that none of that ma- content is actually matters if you're just there in there for the story. Like, if you're there just to play the game for a story and then that's it, then that content is pretty much irrelevant to you. Yeah. But in I, general I, sense. Just I mean, the, real, the real shame, though, is the idea that it's like, I want to play a game day one. Not, also, just because I want to play a game when it comes out, I think that's a natural idea that, that makes sense that's a logical <laughs> yeah that's a yeah. logical but like, request everything i want to play our... the game the day it comes out and is available for release yeah but then just like everything of with all these like broken games and season passes and all these things like that it's just everything tells you not to yeah yeah and we, that's just the get, real we shame get fucking, we get fucking played you know and, and kind of a kind of an addendum to that is I remember the last time I felt like I'm just going to go throw caution and everything to a wind and buy a brand new spanking new released game without looking up a review or anything. Yeah, I've done that a few times. And that was Soul Calibur 5. Yeah, yeah. I remember that game. Fuck yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I I can't remember the last time exactly that I did that, but I used to do that all the time. I think, uh, no, I did write an article about how I did that for Shadowrun Returns. Yeah. Uh, back when that came out, and actually worked out really well. Yeah, that was but a that, good that's game. the other really yeah. problem is that there's a really cool aspect to just playing the blackout and being like, "I'm going to get this game because it looks cool." Yeah, yeah. I've done that before, but like the only problem is that half the time you just get completely burned. Either you know, sometimes it's just because the game's bad, and you know, whatever. That's yeah. partially your fault. But then the, the real bummer is when the game does look good and it looks like everything's fine, and then it's just broken, or it has like a season pass that's basically mandatory to enjoy the game. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, don't buy day one, folks. Just don't. Don't buy. Se- or if you're gonna buy Arkham Knight, just don't buy the season pass because we just we just don't recommend yeah, just it. Just enjoy the regular game. Yeah, because unless you're like you're really again, into the, Batgirl, the content which, is probably not gonna matter, and if you're just playing for the story anyway. Like the real shame though is that like unless you're really into Batgirl, which I thought would be super cool to play, and it's like nope, season pass. It's like I can't. Yeah. There's not even like a thing where I can just play as Batgirl for fun. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So moving right along. So remember when we were kind of saying last week, oh, hey, if they pull PT, you can still re-download it, right? Well, yeah. Konami is doing everything in its damned power to wipe PT from the face of the earth <laughs> as they are making sure that any download files or anything are pulled uh, from PlayStation servers. I like to use the word purge instead. Yeah, they are purging PT from existence like in every way, shape, and form. And yeah, so even if you have PT on your account, you can no longer re-download it. Yep. Yeah. Luckily, it's gone I, forever. Luckily, I downloaded it and then never played it, so it's just same, sitting there on my PS4. Same here. Yes, that's for the best. Really, the uh, just because I've seen a lot of people talking about it before we get into like the obvious stuff, the only reason I can see Konami doing this that makes any sort of sense to me is that because that is a direct ad for Silent Hills with a trailer at the end of it. Like I can understand their idea from a marketing perspective. Like we don't want to, we don't want people like coming to us and sending emails and Twitter stuff, going like, "We're Silent Hills. I played the demo and it was great." Like that is the only reason I understand that. But then, then they shouldn't that's, have put that's, it out in the first because that's going to happen anyway. Yeah, but then obviously the easy rebuttal to that is like that's a very short-sighted look at it because then it sees the game only as a marketing demo and not as an actual good game. Which you know I'm sure they know that much from what people said yeah. about it. And I think also you never know if there could have been any kind of red tape bullshit because of they were working with people from Hollywood on this thing that while, you know, I don't know if Norman Reedus is shown in it at all or anything, but there could have been a thing of, well, you're not doing this anymore and we don't want to be associated with it, blah, 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 or, you know, yeah, we can't. I don't- 
I don't think we ever got like the exact reason that all this happened. Like oh, everybody is because the Silent Hills is no longer coming out. That's what well, Konami I mean, said I, in the press. Yeah, but I mean, like, why Silent Hills isn't coming out? Like, I wonder if yeah. that is because, like, I have a lot of people just assumed it's financials and just it wasn't worth it. But you know, Chris has bring a good point. Or I wonder if it was more of a Hollywood problem or probably the actor or director. Well, I I'm think... assuming Kojima hates or uh, Konami hates video yeah, games. Yeah, because this was also a collaboration between Kojima and Del Toro and the like. And considering, I know last week we talked about this this huge fucking rift that seemed to have been torn between Kojima and uh, Konami, and how Kojima wants nothing to do with them. Konami obviously doesn't want anything to do with him, and you know that's kind of almost another discussion. But yeah, like not only is Konami trying to make sure that PT is removed from any PlayStation servers, but uh, there was because this was also something I think I mentioned last week of how. People were selling fucking PlayStation consoles on eBay and marking them up to ridiculous prices of like fourteen hundred dollars because yeah. it had PT installed on it. Which and eBay Konami, since taken those down. Yep, Konami basically did go straight to eBay saying you have to stop this. Yeah. Like, and part of shit. me wants to just call bullshit, but part of me understands why Konami's trying to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably for the best, if only for you know, just that's stupid, man. Like, yeah, don't make people pay $14 for, for an for hour-long game. For me, it's like, if you are willing to spend that, then you have earned that. You have earned that <laughs> yeah. price if you're willing to pay that much for, the de for like, one little game. Yeah, I just it's, think For it's me, that, that's, that's where that falls under, personally. It's, it's like that crazy bullshit that happened when, like, Flappy Bird got taken down from, like, iOS and everything. And then people started selling, like, fucking iPods for, like, $2,000 because it's got Flappy Bird on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, just... for me, if, like, if you're willing to pay that price, you have earned it. Yeah. I feel like my thing would be like, yo, just wait for someone to crack it and then release the files in some kind of playable state online. Because that That'll probably happen at some point. It would point. take years for you to get some kind of emulator that could run it correctly, but it will happen at some point in the future. There will be a version of that game that exists. Yeah, maybe. I would guarantee it, just considering how popular it was. There's somebody who has already and taken yeah, the files and put them the online. Fan base we're talking about in particular. Yeah. Eventually, like pirates will get at it, and they will archive that game for the, everybody else. I mean, it almost. I mean, this shit almost seems kind of unprecedented because uh, you know we've seen stuff get taken down from various uh, online retailers in the past. But even if somebody had it on an account, they could still re-download it. That is not going to be the case. Yeah, here. this is this is pretty new, at least from from what I can gather. I've never heard of this happening before. Yeah, no. same here. I mean, and it's not like I mean, and they were putting it out could for have, free. We just never, it could have, but we just don't never heard of it. Yeah, probably I mean, no. It, and since they were doing it for free, it's not like anybody paid anything for it, so nobody can ever bring up the argument of like, well, no, this is on my account and it is mine. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like against Sony's TOS or like for publishers, or whatever. That if you paid for it, it probably had to exist unless there was a licensing problem. So maybe yeah. only because it was free, they were able to completely take it away. Yeah. Oh. Because yeah. otherwise, someone could probably sue Sony over it or something like that. And it's yeah. and it's also. Kind of weird, I guess, you know, if anybody wants to see anything of PT, I guess video is going to be the only way that it exists unless Konami starts pulling that shit off as well. That would be really bizarre if they started you know, pulling down videos of PT. That'd be super fucked. Yeah, it, would, that... it would definitely cement the, ev the Konami doesn't want this evidence of this ever existing anymore. I um, mean, and that, and that sounds like that would be like, I don't put it past them to do that either. I would be kind of surprised if they went that far, because that seems like a lot of work, but that would be, like, that would definitely cement the idea that they do not want anyone to remember this game exists. Oh. Yeah, Super definitely, fucked. if they go that far. <coughs> Alright, well. What a weird story. Yeah, so I think with that, we'll get into our usual sh shenanigans, and Sam, since you were here last week, oh. how's your time been? Uh, I spent, like, Part of that past week just feeling like crap between like sore throat and ear infection and all kinds of fun oh. stuff. But uh, past that, uh, instead of talking about the couple of games I've played for like an hour each or whatever, I guess I could talk about some peripherals that I got for gaming because I finally got my check in from that furniture show that I was doing Ooh. and got all that cash and all that. So I decided that because I am insane. I was going to buy a brand new monitor that cost $700. Jesus! 
It is called. It's to each his own, I suppose. That's how much my forty-two inch TV costs, man. <laughs> well, first let me specify that for those who people who know this by its name, they probably know why it costs so much. But I'm gonna break it down in just a second. But it is called the ASUS ROG Swift. Although, as my friend has pointed out, the ROG it is technically called the ASUS Republic of Gamers Swift because that's what ROG is. It's like their ASUS is super high end tier gaming stuff. Yeah. And I, got, uh, I have a motherboard from them. So just because I love listing off the specs on stuff and because I paid enough money that I want to brag about this just once in my life, uh, this is a 27 inch, 2560 by 1440. Uh, 144 hertz G-Sync enabled monitor. That is a TN panel with a one millisecond response time. It is kind of insane. <laughs> like but, I know, just like, like you, you, yeah, like you would you would mention you went from a dual monitor setup to this one. Yeah, I went from two Dell monitors that were two IPS displays that were 27, 23 inch monitors that were 1080p 60, you know, pretty standard. And then I went to one 27 inch, 144 hertz, 1440p. And yeah, it's, dude, it's a beautiful monitor. Let me tell you. That refresh but, rate. Yeah. It was kind of funny because when I first booted it up, I was like, this doesn't look any different to me. And I realized that by default, like most games in Windows, uh, because they don't seem to understand the refresh rate, I guess because of G-Sync or something like that, um, they all default to like either 24 or 60. So when I was looking at it, it was at like 24 frames a second. I bumped it up to 144, and I was like, oh, man, I just want to maximize and minimize Windows all day because it looks so <laughs> smooth. <sighs> it's bizarre. But, yeah, let just the gaming experience has been better because of this. I'm trying to think of like a way to explain this monitor, but just holy hell, you kind of have to look it up for yourself. Um. Uh, like, I watched a couple of reviews of it. The only bad thing about it is things that everybody has told me, which is because of the panel type TN, which is known for having a super small, uh, super low refresh rate, just like one millisecond as low as you can go. It does have slightly washed out colors compared to an IPS display that I used to have. So it's kind of noticeable when I look at colors and they're a little more dull than I remember. But mm. small price to pay when I can, like, just, it's really cool to go into a game and turn it up to, like, 1440p. I don't have to have any kind of anti aliasing <laughs> And uh, I suppose just to point out, the biggest thing about the price is that you can get a 1080p 140 refresh monitor for maybe like 350. You can get a 20, uh, you can get a 1440p monitor for like 300 bucks. You can get a 4K monitor for like 500. The only reason this one costs so much is because G-Sync, which is Nvidia's variable refresh rate technology that basically allows you to have vertical synchronization without a frame cap or any kind of input delay. That alone, like the little chip that goes inside the monitor, costs like three hundred bucks. So, like, is you're... it worth it? It's hard to say because when I started playing games, I was like, I don't really feel like I notice it. But I would almost guarantee that if I went back to my old monitor, I'd be like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Yeah, possibly. Like, it's that's what it seems like, especially with the refresh rate too and all that. Where it's like, I don't seem to notice. Like, I notice the size and resolution quite a bit. But when it comes to the other stuff, it seems like the kind of thing where if I went back, I would, like, a lot of people, the reviews were just like, you can't go back. And maybe what they meant isn't, it's so awe-inspiring when you actually use it, so much as when you use anything else. You're so yeah. used to that. You just have a new standard that you're used to. So, with, like, the chip inside the monitor, and the fact, you know, you've got really good NVIDIA cards, like, it's like those two things are able to talk to each other well enough to, to just to make the game and the picture look better. Yeah, so they're G-Sync, like, they explain it online, but it seems that my basic understanding of this is that when you have vertical synchronization off, the game has tearing issues, which if you've ever had that off, it happens in console games a lot too, which just means that uh, horizontally you'll see that the game is mismatched, so you see, like, what looks like a, like, if you tore a piece of paper and moved them left and right across each other. Yeah. And that means that you don't have any kind of input delay, you can have an uncapped frame rate, but... You know, you have tearing. If you turn vertical synchronization on, then uh, your frame rate is capped at whatever the game says, which is usually 60, very rarely at 30, and it causes a small amount of input delay. So because uh, I believe what NVIDIA says is that it's actually trying to work with your processor, and the reason for the input delay is that sometimes your processor is not keeping up with your graphics card and your monitor because they have to all sync together. 
And apparently what yeah. G-Sync does is because there's a piece in the monitor itself, it ignores your processor altogether and just goes straight to your card, and they talk to each other. So that way there is no kind of delay because they are just in perfect sync the entire time because there is, like, a tiny processor in here doing all the work. <laughs> So it means no input delay, you can have an uncapped frame rate, and the thing that people have mentioned, which I have kind of noticed, it really, really varies from game to game, I definitely noticed in Armor 3 last night, is that you can have as low as like 35, 40 frames a second, and it still looks like 60, because it just looks so smooth. So it actually means that your frame rate can actually bounce around a bit, and you won't really actually notice the difference, which is definitely nice. And it's probably one of those things that would drive me insane if I went back to an old monitor. Yeah, you PC master race. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned it off the podcast that in older episodes, I've talked about the whole uh, 60 frames per second thing. And I was like, now I'm going to be that guy who's like, if the game doesn't run at 120 frames a second, why am I even here? Oh, yeah, you are going to be that guy. <laughs> and we're going to have debates about it because we have debates about everything. Yeah. This one, uh, just reader, is 144, but I don't know anything that runs at 144 natively. Like, it makes everything smoother, for sure, and it makes your reaction time better, but the highest I've seen as far as, like, animations designed for the frame rate is, like, 120, and even then, it's, like, I don't even think Counter-Strike's one. I think, like, Battlefield supports 120 natively, which basically just means, like, everything looks like it's running at 120. It's a really bizarre thing to explain, but it just means everything looks smoother. Which is always good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everything I paid for was just, it looks better. And I had that conversation with a friend of mine last night. I came over to buy my old monitors off me, which is like, uh, I was talking to one of my coworkers about this, and I told him how much I paid for the monitor. And he was like, well, why wouldn't you just buy, like, I don't know, a Titan or something with that? And it's like, well, the problem with that is that as much as I could get better parts without a better monitor, what's the point? I, if yeah, the screen I'm looking it's... at isn't up to the quality you, of your the screen parts can't I can't handle it, there's no point. Well, sorry, I can't handle it, but it's like, what's the point of having super nice graphics if I don't have a screen to appreciate them on? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a kind of fairly average monitor, you know, it's just an Acer, and I bought it at Office Max or whatever, because at the time, it was either this or nothing, because the last monitor I had just fucking broke, and yeah. I needed to replace it, you know, so it's just, it's just a regular, regular, it's a monitor-ass monitor, you know, it's... And, My favorite kind of monitor. Uh, and obviously, I can notice that it does some like screen tearing stuff, and like some of the games I play, uh, it, it's not enough to like take me out of it. But what I do, but what I do sometimes to get around that is because I'll sometimes pipe uh, PC games through my TV by HDMI, and it looks. I mean, so my my forty two inch uh, Vizio, uh, which is a TV I have. Uh, that thing is able to handle games a lot better than than my monitor does. Although, granted, I will sometimes see some some like kind of weird visual shit, but yeah. it's it's not as frequent as it is on my monitor. And again, even playing on my monitor, it, it's it's not bad. It, it's just you know it, it is noticeable, but not to the point of like it takes me out of the game and I can't play it. But yeah, and I've always been that way myself. But it's just one of those things where it's like. You know, I might as well just get this for the next good while to own. Yeah. And also, uh, this isn't also just for gaming. It's also because I do a lot of video editing work and Photoshop work. And having a bigger, higher den higher density display is really nice for that. Mm -hmm. I discovered the other night. I imagine. So that has been great. Um, yeah, also, I, I'm not 100% on this. I'd have to imagine it. it is so, though. But I believe that with G-Sync, even if a game doesn't have any kind of vertical synchronization support, I believe G-Sync takes over anyway. So I guess that basically means that any game has vertical synchronization, as long as the game, some kind of code, doesn't uh, allow that. Fucking uh, monitor is thinking, it's, man. Yeah, it's, it's a it's bizarre... A it's really bizarre to just go to this kind of thing and i'm already starting to get used to it but the first time i sat down with it i was like this thing is massive holy crap <laughs> and i took a picture of it and posted to twitter and like the way it looks in that picture i to me it looks like twice that size like i was like i can't uh -huh. look at this thing this is way too big and i pushed it all the way it's like partly off my desk and pushed against the wall because <laughs> my desk is not like there's not enough depth to it to actually put the whole thing on here it was too close to my face and hurting my eyes 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's fucking insane, man. It was also hilarious to read, like, these Amazon reviews where someone's like, I bought three of these, and it's like, fucking why? What do you own that'll play all of that? Jesus. Like, I can understand, like, I, the friend of mine, the solo box, he's, get, he's getting a surround set up for some shooters and stuff, but those are just 60, 10 to 60 frames a second, 10 to monitors. And it's like, what kind of processor or cards do you have to have to run 344 hertz, 1440 no monitors? That's like... I'm sure whatever you run on that looks that way, that's great, but it's like you probably need, like, a couple of Titans or something. Yeah, I, I, I like, two monitors is the most for me, you know? Yeah. And, like, three, I seriously would not have any idea what the fuck to do with it. Yeah, it's just for, like, I know someone who has, like, three or four. I can't remember what he stopped at. But he uh, he works as, like, a software designer or something like that. So he has, like, you know, Excel worksheets and, you know, certain websites up and backends. And, yeah. you know, he has multiple things going on at any one moment. But I, I'm definitely curious to write, like, a small blog post about going back to one monitor because it's certainly change the way that i play games because i got <laughs> so used to the idea like since i was probably i don't know like maybe 14 or so i have always had either a monitor and a tv or something so i'm so used to the idea of being constantly stimulated in the sense yeah, that same, when you're that's doing, how like, i watch tv shows i do it while i'm playing games yeah so like whenever you enter any kind of loading time or like the common one for me is if i die and have to replay something i'll immediately load up the video I'm like i don't care about the audio in the game whatever i've already experienced this so that the idea that it's like there's always something fresh and stimulating happening. So it's really uh, bizarre. It's... Like, I was just playing a game, like, last night. And it's like, I have to put my full focus on this game. And it, it definitely changes the way you experience it. It's one of those things of, like, you know, sometimes people have, like, the TV on just for background noise, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, and I for me, so I listen to, to stuff that. podcast style while I'm playing games a yeah. lot of the time. I, I've, done, I've done that exact same thing of... Like, some games, you need something else just to fucking keep you like, awake. Like, like, when I'm playing through Far Cry 4, I had, like, I was listening to, like, le video lectures from my college professor. Yeah. While I yeah. was playing that game, because it's, it's a mind, it's mindless chore, so you're not really missing out on anything by listening to something else while you're doing it. Yeah. Or, you know, shit like Diablo. You play, you play that shit long enough. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You need, you need yeah. something else to listen to. Like, I have, like, a podcast or on. Or, like, when you're well. grinding an RPG. Like, you yeah. might do something with that time. M MMOs, for sure. I remember, uh, funny you mentioned Far Cry 4, because when I was doing the same thing you were, which was getting, like, all the posters and such, and all yeah. the masks or whatever, uh, I ended up watching Giant Bomb's uh, Drew's Trip to North Korea, which was, like, three hours long. And that's Man. just, I had that on a second monitor the whole time, just watching that. Yeah, yeah. Because like, it was I, like, I this is boring. <laughs> I definitely, like, had, like, a, a bunch of videos that I was late, that I had to work through in my backlog while yeah. I was playing Far Cry 4. And Far Cry 3 to a lesser extent. Yeah, so the single monitor life has been interesting. I'll, I'll probably have to write or make something about it. But it's... I, I've definitely had people asking me, like, is it really worth the money? And it's like, I am very different about money, I guess, than most people, because I have definitely a lot of disposable income comparatively. But at least as far as you, as long as I know that I'm going to have this for a while, I would probably say so, because when I got this, I ultimately decided between, like, for a while I looked at a 4K monitor, and then I looked at a 144 hertz monitor, and at some point I was like, you know, if I'm going to end up spending, because I think what I was looking at it was like a BenQ 144 hertz 1080p monitor. It was like 25 inches or whatever. And it was like 500 bucks. And it's like, at that point, I might as well just say fuck it and just spend the extra 200 and get the extra resolution and the <laughs> G-Sync. Because it's like, if I'm spending $500, what's another $200 at that point? Yeah. yeah. It, it was just such a bizarre moment of yeah, like, I mean, just it'd be quite diminishing honest. returns on money at some point. <laughs> I mean, and, and to be quite honest, I mean, you very well could use that thing for like a decade. You know, that's. Yeah, like, you know, my dad made the joke where he's like, I hope they'll keep you happy for like three weeks because he knows I go through technology a lot. But, <laughs> like, I don't know what else, like, as much as maybe higher resolution would be cooler, like maybe 4K if I had a better card, but at some point it's like no game for the next five years is going to support more than 60 hertz natively, <laughs> unless it's a like racing game, like no like multi console port PC game is yeah. going to do yeah. that. No game is going to have really nice above 1080p visuals natively, and it's you know just things like that. So it's like this is very much I'm hoping future proofing it because it's just it has everything that should oh, yeah. be good for like the next. It five only years. does everything. Yeah. 
Literally the only thing that has against it is the panel type with the colors. So I almost debated getting a Acer Predator, which came out in the time between the furniture show and getting my check uh, cleared. Which I thought about getting that one, but when I read the reviews for that and saw like every video review, even the best reviews of it saying they loved it, there's apparently a backlight bleed in the bottom right. And I thought about that and I was like, that would drive me completely insane after a couple of weeks or months. Like, the idea that every time I look in the bottom right corner that there would be just a shimmering light in there, I would go completely insane. Because just little things like that would bother me. So I ultimately decided to go with this one. Not bad. Anyway. So anything, anything else? Uh, so, the other peripheral I got is I decided to also get a new 3DS because GameStop had a trade-in deal going to get uh, 60 bucks off if you traded in your old 3DS XL. And I want to tell a bit of my story about that because it was loads of fun, and I talked about it off the podcast. Yeah, let's get into that bullshit. (laughs) So I thought that I was super smart when I know the whole thing about the system transfer and all that. I listened to podcasts about it, and I was like, okay, I'm going to copy all the contents of my 3DS XL onto an SD card, onto my computer, and that way it'll have the entire system copied on there because I've played PC games, even console games and all that. I understand how that stuff works. It's all on the card. It makes sense. Then I went to GameStop, traded it in, got home, copied all the contents to my new 3DS, capital N new 3DS. <laughs> so that's confusing. Yeah, really uh, it is. Uh, some people have called it the 3DSC for the circle, the extra circle pad, or the 3DS nub. But So I copied all that, and I, apparently I was not that smart because it does not copy your account. Or any Ooh. of your stuff, so all the games are on there, but I can't access them. Oh, I know shit. it's gonna be great. <sighs> so don't, caught... don't you love the the all digital future, Sam? Of it works for the fucking most part. It's just Nintendo. <laughs> like I can fucking load up a new Rob on my phone, or I can buy a new phone and hook in my Google account. And it's like here's all the stuff you bought, Sam. Like thanks. Also, here's all your emails, calendar, and all that is all backed up, including all your phone contacts. Great. And it's like, I can format my PC, and it's like, here's your Google account with all your stuff, and here's your Adobe account with all your safe projects. Yeah, I Great. found that because of Steam's cloud saves, getting my PC back up running was really not that big of a deal. Yeah, so it's just really bizarre when, when you go I got to Nintendo, and it's like, oh, Nintendo, you thought it was 2002 all of a sudden. <laughs> Wait, such thing as cloud does not exist. So, so I contacted... Nintendo's customer support, and surprisingly enough, they were extremely friendly and as helpful hmm. as they could be. I don't um, even know their, their employers are a bunch of idiots when it comes to the yeah. fucking internet. Like, I don't remember if they had some kind of bad rap or something. I thought somebody told me that, but they were very, very helpful, as much as they could be, because the first guy I talked to, he was like, okay, so, you know, your account information and all that, I told him that, and then he's like, okay, it's gonna take, like, five to seven days, because someone in the back has to go transfer your account, and I was like, that's so well, silly, though. Fuck. Okay. Someone in the back. <laughs> yeah, someone some in, in the, the back, back <laughs> has to transfer the account manually. Yeah. Could so you just have the fucking computer do it? Hey, Garrett, we're talking about transferring stuff to the Capital N new 3DS. Go, oh boy. <laughs> Nintendo so, customer service. So, just to recap the past, like, 10 seconds for Garrett, I had to contact Nintendo customer support because I transferred my stuff without doing the official system transfer because I traded in my old 3DS. And so I got like the five, seven days and then I waited that amount of time and it was like Thursday or something like that. I got an email from them going like, hey, could you call us back? And I did. And I was like, is this like an automated message that I just misread? Like, was that just a in case I have a problem? And she was like, no, no, no. It's like, we need more information from you. And I was like, oh, God. (laughs) So she just real quick. She was like, "Okay, real quick. What is your credit card information? Like the last four numbers or whatever. And what is the last thing you purchased? And I told him about Monster Hunter. And then she's like, "Okay, we're good. And I was like, so I still got to wait like five more days, right? She was like, yeah, it's going to be like three to five days. But apparently either maybe she was just wrong, maybe because some guy in the back felt noticed how long it had already been. But literally like 10 minutes after she hung up, I got an email saying, hey, your account has been transferred. Just hit link your ID. So I did that and I was able to set it up. The only problem is I lost all my save data for anything I downloaded. All my cart games like Mario and Fire Emblem still have all the save data. But I lost all my Monster Hunter stuff, which was like 12, 15 hours in. Oh, I lost like my like, two hours of Persona Q or whatever. 
So oh, I'm currently that, replaying Persona that. Q is a really tough game to replay parts parts of. Yeah, it's, that's going to be like load up a podcast or a video and just kind of mindlessly jam through all the story you stuff. You have catch to, up. dude. You have to. Yeah. Um. So aside from that, which is oh god, Nintendo, please catch up to the modern day. <laughs> so far behind. Uh, aside from that, the new 3DS is actually pretty neat. I'm not uh to get like real technical. I'm not a huge fan of the sort of glossy finish compared to the matte one, but Aside from that, uh, I was of actually kind of... enjoy the matte finish. Yeah, I mean, that's what my monitor is, too. The other one was glossy. No, you, you missed the joke, because Matt... Uh, oh, that, nobody's going to get that joke, except, like, one no person. No one's ever going to get that joke. Yeah, yeah. You, you're reaching there, buddy. You're... Yeah. So, uh, funny thing is, you guys remember when you first saw this, that it had the ZL and ZR buttons, and they were inside of the other ones? Yeah, which apparently is not you, uncomfortable. Apparently, you can totally hit those, and it's actually not that bad, because the regular Z and L button... L and R buttons are actually super small, so it's actually really not that hard at all to hit them. Hmm. Uh, I don't know about hitting them without hitting the others, because I've not tried a game where they're, they serve different functions, but that is nice. Uh, other quick things is that the circle pad nub thing, I'm getting used to it, but it's not great, because <laughs> it's like the most resistive nub I have ever used in my life, uh. so it's really... Like, it's super, super sensitive, so it's, I could be wrong, but it seems like the way you're supposed to do it is just put, like, an immense amount of pressure on it, and then just kind of very lightly just kind of, like, rub it with your thumb to move around. Because I tried to actually, like, make it move, and that doesn't really work, because your finger just slides off. So it seems like the idea is you're supposed to put a lot of pressure on it, and just kind of, like, you know, just kind of, like, rotate your thumb around it. It's really It's like... It sounds a little bit oddly different from like those, like the the kind of nubbits you see on like yeah, laptops. Yeah, it's, it's not like uh, what is it, Lenovo or whoever who makes the ThinkPad. It's not like those; they're not as good. Yeah, the yeah. Um, I know, so... I know, uh, you know. I don't mean to cut you off, but like yeah. the the whole thing of like Nintendo and transferring shit. Yeah, it's and, a nightmare I mean, with all of your stuff. Yeah, I that is the big reason I decided, ne- despite the fact I have a Wii U, I'm still holding on to my original Wii, and I'm not transferring anything onto it. <laughs> not I, a damn thing. I remember with the Wii, they had to introduce the idea of system blocks, like you had to buy memory cards for it, because there's no oh, space on it, and, they imagined, and I remember yeah. transferring that stuff, it was like copyright, prote- not copyright, yeah. it was like encrypted on the card or whatever, and it's like, oh god, what a nightmare. Yeah, because it was, it was basically their form of DRM to where like, you couldn't just buy a virtual console game, put it on your SD card, and then take it over to somebody else's house and copy. No, yeah. you couldn't do that. It was locked to the console. Not an account, uh... but to the console. Yep, that's what which, it was for the new 3DS. Yeah, so again, it's like, uh, I'm just going to hold on to my original Wii till I die, and then when it fucking bites the dust, well, I guess I'm not playing that anymore. I'm not transferring shit. Yep. It's... Yep. Yep, it's a nightmare. Uh, um, it's Nintendo. Uh, I guess the last few things I want to mention about the new 3DS, because I like to think this will help someone out who might be looking at this. The fucking... <sighs> I was also trying not to curse that much lately. <laughs> uh, that was something I was briefly going to mention. Uh, it's hard. The, the backlight, uh, backplate system on this is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Which is the whole thing of, like, people have seen probably videos of it, but the first thing that I noticed, and what caused me to actually uh, partially break my backplate, which I luckily Nintendo actually offers replacement for them, and I just bought one, um, is that when you unscrew it, the screws do not come out, they just come loose. So mm. that's really weird, because you basically have to unscrew it and pry it off at the same time, because otherwise the screws will get caught on, like, the last little curve, and you won't be able to get it out. That sounds also, annoying. And what I also discovered is that because this, the, uh, the power button is jutted outward, so that you can actually press it easily... If you just try to pull it straight off, you're going to do what I did, which is you're going to snap the piece of plastic above the power button, which causes it to bend, which means that the backplate does not fully close anymore. Uh. So I had to, like, unscrew the backplate, which for that, I even had to have a Phillips zero-point head screwdriver. <laughs> and I was talking to my dad, and I was like, who the, who has that screwdriver just lying around? Like, that you was imagine- an argument that people made back when the th- new 3DS came out. Yeah, that it's very just same like, argument. I feel so bad for, like, kids who got this for Christmas or whatever, and it's like, hey, we bought you a card so you can get some games or whatever, and it's like, oh, do you have a screwdriver? Yeah. Do you have an extremely small screwdriver? Yeah, no shit. Like, the smallest they come in? And they couldn't at least, like, put one in the package and yeah, solve it, all the problems. 
I mean, it also doesn't come with an AC adapter, mind you. Do you Again, do you have a screw. Yeah. Do you have a screw Solve all the problems by putting things in the package that it comes yeah. with. Yeah, I mean, even if it costs like an extra, if it costs like an extra twenty bucks, it would have been worth it to have an AC adapter and a little Phillips head screwdriver for it. Jesus. Um, and the last thing about that, that I guess I should bring up is. Uh, People did, like, part of the reason I got this is because it's a 3DS, and the 3D on the original one gave me headaches because, you know, that there's the whole sweet spot thing where uh, if you don't hold it at the exact correct angle, there's a sort of ghosting effect, like a stereoscopic problem, and yeah. it, it, that happens in movies as well. I get headaches from 3D movies, so yep. I don't go see them with friends. Yep. I, know, so, I know that. So I tried it with this one, and by God, it actually works 95% of the time. Because the way they set it up is there is a camera that follows your head. So when I, if you look really closely, the 3D is actually slightly moving depending on where your head is. Hmm. Um, so uh, just playing like Monster Hunter, I discovered it kind of gave me a headache. But I think that's because there is a sort of translucent effect on all the HUD, which makes it kind of weird to look at. But like when I first yeah. booted up and I didn't have any of the download stuff, I played Super Mario 3D Land. And that totally works. And it looks great. And I was yeah, just super, super stoked that, like, I could lean back a little bit and I could just kind of, like, crack my neck for a second. And, you know, like, the worst case, it'll freak out for a second. It'll just kind of, like, you know, flash. And that's just saying, hey, we lost your head. Please come back. And it'll immediately <laughs> fix itself. <laughs> like, if you just move all the way away from the screen, it'll just, like, it'll kind of, like, ghost for a second. And then it'll go back to normal. And then if you just come back, it'll ghost for a second and then come back to normal. It's yeah, like, Super Mario 3D totally Land works. has always been has always been kind of touted as this was the argument for, like, 3D enhancing the game. Like, Yeah. It's also the only one, I think, I'd have to try with more games to make sure, but it's the only one that I know of where they have two forms of 3D because the default 3D in the game is depth, where you're supposed to be able to... It looks like the screen actually has depth where you can see into it. I suppose they both are, but you know what I mean when I say that. Whereas the... 3D Land has an option where they're trying to make it look like things pop out, like they pull things to the foreground rather than pushing things into the background, mm. which I think actually works better, but it's the only game I know of that actually does that. Mm. Sounds good. Oh. Uh, so. I was just going to say, <laughs> it's the last quick thing, because whatever, I've, I beat Dark Souls 2 again for the fifth time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how was the first sin? Did you, yeah. Are you a scholar of it? Did you learn about the first sin? I guess I should talk about that since it's the new version of the game. I forgot to get the ending that is new to the new version of the game. <laughs> so that was kind of whoops. Now, you can you explain what you mean by you forgot to do that? <laughs> so in Dark Souls, it's the same as Dark Souls 1 where there is an obvious thing that you're supposed to do and the other option is to walk away. So when I beat Dark Souls 2, I know that if you walk forward then it causes the cutscene to end the game. The only difference is that when I beat the final boss, I saw a like piece of light, like a sort of beam of light, and I was like, hey, that's new. I bet I walk into that, and then it starts the cutscene with Alia, and then I get to do the extra thing. And then it said, you know, like, ascend the throne. That's not much of a spoiler if you don't know what's going on. Um, and it said that, and then it triggered that cutscene. I was like, hey, 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 don't roll credits. Oh my god, I forgot to fight the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, you know, booted me back to the beginning, and it was like, "Hey, you want to start New Game Plus?" And I was like, yeah, "Oh again, man!" Because I and I looked it up, and it's like you're supposed to walk out of the room, and then it triggers the cutscene that where you get booted back into the room to fight the boss. I was like, "Oh, whoops, freaking Dark Souls." <laughs> uh, oh well. I suppose it is worth mentioning though that Skull of the First Sin. I remember when I first played it on Twitter, I complained that I thought a lot of the new stuff was kind of crap, where it's just a lot of, like, new enemies. It was just like, let's just throw more enemies at you. As it turns out, though, there is a specific point uh, at the Shaded Woods, which is about halfway through the game, where they completely remove the enemy type from the game and replace it. And that was when it's like, okay, they're actually doing some work here. And uh, I just want to do a slight spoiler because I thought it was super cool, is that when you get to the very end, there is an area called the Dragon Airy, and there is a set of armor that you can get as a secret set of armor that's like the Dragon Slayer armor. Mm -hmm. It's like a really pointed, and it has like a pointed spear and all that. And those enemies are actually everywhere in that area now because they're controlling the dragons, which kind of makes sense. So it's kind of funny. Every time you walk up to them, they just bow to you. They do like the super respectful bow where they fold their hand in themselves and they do a deep bow. And if at first, because it's Dark Souls, I even though they don't attack you initially, I killed all of them. And then when you get to the top of the stairs, there are literally twenty five of them, and they all attack you at once. Oh shit! Because <laughs> you did not respect them. So I, um, when I died, and when I went back, I didn't are you kill saying it. they got mad because you murdered the shit out of them? Because <laughs> I murdered all their <laughs> friends. So what's funny you is think that, that if... might have caused them to be angry at you. 
<laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. A little bit. But uh, what's funny is that if you don't do that and then you go up to them, when you ascend the stairs up to the old dragon, they all bow as you walk by them, and then you have to kill their leader. And if you kill their leader, they bow to you again, and then they just stand guard. So it was just the idea of, like, you defeat our leader, you win, congratulations, go talk to the dragon. And it was just, like, this really cool moment of, like, dude, you actually built some really cool lore into the gameplay. Like, it wasn't just an extra cutscene or an extra weapon, which there are those too, but it's like you actually designed a new gameplay element that fits with the lore of the universe. And I was just blown away. How, allow us to acknowledge how dope you are. Just Yeah, it was just super cool that they actually, like, they bow to you and they respect you. Have we told you, you that you're awesome today? <laughs> <laughs> like there are actually uh there are phantoms that do that in the dlc like that's what they experimented with the idea of phantoms doing emotes but i just thought it was super cool that they bow to you as you walk by them as if they're actually standing guard like they're like we don't want to fuck with you if you want to go talk to the dragon but you have to beat our captain to talk to him and i was like okay and that was just the one moment like all the other areas they have some neat little tricks or some different enemy placements there there's a lot more like that but that was the specific one where i was like this is awesome this actually makes sense in the universe, and it's not just let's throw more enemies at you for no reason. Yeah, anyway. I, I actually look forward to playing that version of the game, considering it, I, I've not played Dark Souls 2 before. Yeah, so. same here. Also, uh, apparently Patrick posted a, a uh, Patrick Klepik on Kotaku posted I was a say, you're not, you're not close to the Patrick Klepik to call him by his no, first name. No, only George. <laughs> only the Weedman. Uh, but with, with Patrick, he also an article of something that I forgot about when Dark Souls 2 came out, which is if you played it on PC that ran at 60 frames per second, your weapons degraded at twice the rate because of the frame rate. Oh. They were, they, apparently, I forgot about that, and they only fixed it, like, last week. Like, for <laughs> both versions of the game. And I sat there, and I was like, I've beaten that game four times while weapons were breaking at twice the speed they normally do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, after I got the patch, I beat the game, and I was like, man, all of a sudden my weapons aren't breaking all the time, and I don't have to buy super expensive repair powder constantly. Like, that changes the whole game! <laughs> I was like, oh. I can't believe they only just fixed that! Wow. Oh my god. And, and now you're going to see a petition to put that, that glitch yeah, back in. Yeah, I was in. playing the game on hard mode, and people are going to be like, it's not, it's not hard enough. Oh, yeah, there are going to be people. Who, there are going to be people who would do that, though. No joke. Yeah, there's going to be someone who's going to mod it. It's like we're going to make this hard again. Sadistic motherfuckers. Just... <laughs> Dark Souls players are are masochists by nature. I guess. Damn. You kind of have, have to, to be, be to enjoy that series. To play it, not really, but to actually enjoy it, you have to be masochistic. Because in order to do a lot of the side stuff, you just have to do ridiculous things. Anyway. That's gone oh. for another time, though, but my week has been buying peripherals, setting them up, and then I finished Dark Souls on the new monitor. It looked gorgeous. Dark Souls is cool. Like Dark awesome. Souls. Yeah. So anyway. Speaking of awesome, Garrett. He's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he is. <clears throat> what you been up to, Garrett? But do you feel awesome? No, I'm feeling okay. I'm, uh, <laughs> Have I've I been... told you that you're awesome today? Uh, yes. Don't bow to me. No, I've been... <laughs> I've been fighting off a... Hang on, my computer's all locked up now. Um, anyway, I've been fighting off an ear and throat infection since two days ago. Ugh. I bet you uh, Sam infected him. I don't, know what, I don't know what happened. I went to the... I woke up on... Shit, I think it was... I woke up on Thursday. That's it. I woke up on Thursday because that was the day I had finals. I woke up on Thursday morning and my throat hurt. And I thought, ah... I was probably just a nasal drip, and I'll just, you know, I, show, I went over, got an A on my final. Nice. Was awesome. We had to do, we we had to create a 3D, uh, using Blender, we had to model a, we were going to model an Imperial German helmet, but our teacher changed that because somebody was very stupid, and they said, hey, um, are we going to be modeling a helmet? And our teacher wanted to surprise us, so we went, no. No, you're not going to model a helmet. Shit, I'm going to think of something else for them to model. So the <laughs> next time... Oh, so, boy. Yeah, so the next time we showed up, he said, okay, uh, we, you weren't going to model a helmet, but instead you're going to model a pitcher or a vase. Uh, I picked a pitcher, and we, he, we, we had to model it. And um, I wanted... There's a comic that I read called Zoophobia, and in it, one of the characters, Damien, one of the things he makes is, um, he's like, "Hey, brother, I made you, uh, I made you some uh, a pot of Kool Aid." And the guy's like, "A pot of Kool Aid?" He's like, "Yeah, hot Kool Aid." That's how you make it, right? Ugh. 
<laughs> he's like, no, you don't. You, you don't make hot Kool Aid. He goes, oh, just throw some ice. In. He's like, Ew. he's like, oh, you don't make hot Kool Aid. Uh, I'll, I'll just throw some ice in. He's like, no, 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 no you, you don't understand. And apparently, it's actually really good. But because uh, people have uh, actually tried it, yeah, I've heard people try it. I think they're crazy. <laughs> but God. um, but yeah. So I was looking for Kool Aid or tea or something like I wanted to find a texture because we had a texture of this thing. Uh, I made a picture. It looked really good. I'm proud of how it came out. I wanted to get a texture that made it look like there was a liquid inside but of it. Did the texture need to pop? No. Damn it. I'm just gonna um, throw my computer out the window. I'm done. But so I um I couldn't find anything when I typed in like the only textures I could find were like Kool-Aid wrappers and stuff like that. So I couldn't um I couldn't find a liquid. So instead mm. it's it's just Damien holding a pot of hot Kool-Aid on the fan. <laughs> that that's the texture that wraps around it. It actually it actually looks really good. But uh, so thank you, uh, Viv, if you're listening to this, because you helped me get an A on my final. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, so that was really good. But uh, so I woke up that morning, and while I was doing the uh, like, like the entire day, my throat was sore and it hurt when I swallowed. But I figured it was nothing. And then I went to bed that night and like fever dreams and tossing and turning, sweating. And I went, oh shit, I'm sick. So the next morning, I went to <sighs> the the doctor, and I can't remember what I have, but um, not only was it a throat infection where there was red, it was inflamed, and there were, like, white streaks and spots all over my throat. Yeah, really bad. But uh, he looked in my ear, and he goes, oh, yeah, you have an ear infection, too. So it's like an ear and Yay, throat infection. Yeah, ear infection, Weed. buddies. Shit. Yeah, so... <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the podcast uh, yeah, the week, I guess. Yeah, this week. <laughs> <laughs> we got it uh but no he yeah he so he put me on an antibiotic uh i have to take it every 12 hours and yeah so that's that's pretty much i i, I yesterday i was really i i'm glad we didn't do the podcast yesterday because i would not have been able to make it because i yeah, was yeah for what you described yesterday like you were in horrible <laughs> I was shape out of I it was, yeah oh, it don't was, worry we found some to pass the time so like if you came in today and you yeah. can say you're okay that's still a very very well step up yeah how you were uh, the other night that's yeah like right right now my throat is still achy but that's about it uh no longer do i have the like the joint pain i like my in, like all of my muscles and my joints were like sore and ached um for some reason my lower back felt like it was like, like it was looped or something like my, my my lower back felt compacted and terrible like i always had to pop my, my lower back because it was really bad like i was always punched over um i had a terrible headache my throat was burning I kept sweating, like it was—it was bad. But uh, so I just, I'm like, hey guys, I I can do the podcast today if you need. You're like, no, oh. no, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, uh... I'd rather not force a sick man to march. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, so Gary, how was your week? Uh, let me tell you, it was great. It was great. So, <laughs> yeah, thank God I'm feeling a lot better today. Um, <laughs> I'm still I'm still writing Good Omens into a screenplay as a mm-hmm. uh, as a hobby, and hopefully that'll be done. Uh, sometime like it should it should be done before this month is 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 out. Nice, cool. Yeah, not not a whole lot to say on that. Just you know, that's something I've been working on. Uh, today I followed. I'm a. This is some league news. Oh um, no, league, league league news. Uh, one of, now Garrett with the league news. Oh, uh, it's yeah. the league update of the week, Garrett. <laughs> well, well, not not quite a uh, league news just like something league related um one of i think i've mentioned this before my favorite champion at the moment to go uh to to play in or to to, to play is a uh, nar yes nar is this little champion and he, his passive is the when he's in um when, when he's being aggressive when he's either taking like 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 when he's in a fight uh, and doing damage and stuff like that when he's around um when he's around uh, aggression in in some way, like if he's hitting minions, or if he's standing around minions and they're getting hit, and just stuff like that, then he gains rage, and when his rage meter fills up, he gets big, gains health and armor, is slower, but does more damage. He becomes like this big... He's thing. the Hulk. He becomes, he, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's pretty much the Hulk. He's and Bruce he's Banner on, and the Hulk. He, he, uh, I play him top lane. Super fun champion. Uh, I was I found it kind of rare. Like, there's not a whole lot of Nar mains, and I was like, that's weird because his boomerang gives him range, and then he can go big. So you have the like, you get health regen and more damage. He has an escape. He has his hop. Like it, all of Nar, he's pretty perfect. You just have to know how to manage his rage. 
when do I start hitting minions to try and build up my rage? When do I become passive and only last hit so I don't gain that much rage? Like, you know, you know, like when should I become big and when should I stay little? Um, and that and that's about it. If you know how to do that, then Nard's pretty easy to play. And so I actually found there's a, apparently a really popular Nar main. Uh, a guy, guy's name the guy's name is Narzies. Uh, he's Genius. on. It's really funny. He's he's on YouTube and Twitch, so I followed him on both, and that was pretty cool. He was like, "Yay for for Nar mains." I was like, "Yeah." Like I like I'm looking at him. You know, Nar is one of those characters like. He's just this little adorable thing that he's, a, into he's, this... he's the cutest champion in the game. He's essentially like Peter the puppy from Earthworm Jim to where like he's this he's this adorable little creature and then he just gets pissed off and turns into this horrendous looking monster. Just <laughs> It's really cool. And apparently he doesn't even know he does it. So it's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, it's really funny, but if you want to uh, look up Playtime with Nar because this there is an artist that Riot commissioned, um, and she drew up a bunch of comics of Nar interacting with other champions, and it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like it's absolutely nice. adorable. Yeah, yeah. Playtime with Nar, like a tw- Twisted Fate is like a card thrower, and so the the very first panel is Nar's like he has Twisted Fate's playing cards, and he's building like like uh, little like playing card castles. <laughs> And he's happy and clapping. He twisted fate in the background, like wondering where his <laughs> cards went. <laughs> I know, uh, really cute. Stuff I know. Like while that. I don't, I know why I don't play League much myself. I like to think of myself as a Blitzcrank man. So, Blitz, Blitzcrank is such a pain, but he's, he's <laughs> yeah, he's 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 great. If if you have a a really good support Blitzcrank, it's 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 pretty it's pretty much over for the for the enemy team because you can as long as as long as they're good because sometimes a Blitzcrank will pull like a f- like a like you you are an ADC you're staying back and you're trying to just hit last hit some some minions and the blitzcrank will go in front of you and pull a uh and will will shoot out their their hand and pull a full health like jungle tank who came into gank towards you you're like oh why did oh. you do that <laughs> you're, like, you're like thanks asshole you just killed me <laughs> it's just a friendly but- roll but yeah, but uh, yeah, if you ha- if you have a good Blitzcrank, they can be hell for the enemy team. Just and, and another thing is he has that uh, that ability where not only can you have a speed boost, but he has like a, an a, a electrical outlet around him, which does damage. So he, like you could just chase somebody down and keep on like hitting hit, hitting that one spell, and then eventually pull them into you, and it's it's pretty much yeah. over. Yeah, he's a very aggressive supporter. It's really cool. So uh, anything else going on? Uh, other than that, just, I'm finally downloading all of my Steam games. I'm actually huh. doing that right now. Oh. Uh, yeah, all of man. It yeah, so uh, long. I wonder where I'm sitting at. 868. I, I don't think I could do that. No. I have, I, I have I know, 63. I know damn well I couldn't. I just do it one I at a ha- time on my new computer. Yeah, I have 63 currently downloading, and then once they're done, I'm done. And that, and that's not including uh, Origins. That's not including Titanfall and my two Battlefield games. Battlefield I would always just redownload them as the need arised, honestly. If if I, because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just waiting until someone says, "Oh, let's play Payday 2," and then I'm like, "I'll finally install Payday 2 back on there." I guess. <laughs> see, I feel you see, I feel bad doing that because then I'm like, "Oh, sure, give me two hours." <laughs> oh, and two hours. It's... That's more like a day or two for me. Yeah, it's, it's like give me. I think I think payday two would take me like an hour and a half. I'm like, guys, hang on, guys. <laughs> so I wish I had your connection. Yeah, yeah well, you know what is weird though? My Wi-Fi sometimes doesn't like downloads for some reason. I can't download the Curse client, so I can't have like mods on the Secret World um, because it keeps on saying Microsoft.net isn't working. Um, sometimes it won't download patches to games. I don't know why. I'll have to take it to school. And use it's my, my, my school's Wi Fi. C sharp compiler not working correctly. We're not yeah, having the correct libraries installed. I don't know. It's really weird, but um other than other than that, I'm actually pretty happy with my my Wi Fi. Uh but that is about it for me, actually. Great. So, Brandon. Yes, sir. How's that Residence of Fate? Because I know that's what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things I'm talking about this week, because it's the game oh, I've been playing uh, most recently. It is a really, really fun game. Yeah, you already blew past me, and I'm trying to replay yeah. it. 
I'm on chapter seven right now. I you was know like three or four. I forgot. So, so this is a JRPG, right? Yes, this is a JRPG written made by Triace. For those of you who aren't aware, they've made games like Valkyrie Profile and uh, Star Ocean. Sure. Well, I can say Valkyrie Profile is good. I don't. I don't know too much about Star Ocean. They're right? both really good games. And, and okay. the thing that separates Triace from most other JRPG developers is that. They don't seem to be content with just having static, boring, menu-based combat. They tend to really want to have really interesting combat systems in their games, which makes them really fun to play. Just without, is it in the general sense, if you, even if you divorce them from the story aspects, which are also usually fairly good. Uh, in this game, a lot of the emphasis is on gunplay, because all your characters have like ranged weapons as their main weapons. There are three types of weapons. There are handguns, submachine guns, and thrown weapons. And the way combat works is that uh, you have, t- you have uh, the machi- submachine guns do what's called scratch damage, which is like temporary health damage. And then when you hit someone with a handgun, it does direct damage, which not only does like actual real health damage, but any scratch damage you've, commi- you've inflicted on the target becomes direct damage. So if I shoot you with a submachine gun, you are injured, but you haven't actually lost any health yet. But then when I shoot you with a pistol afterwards, then you've lost all that health. So it's pretty much like you have one dude who uses probably an SMG, and then the next turn, the guy uses like a, uses yeah. a pistol. And, okay. and oh, all three sounds... characters can use all three weapon types, and they all gain experience in them separately. Like you can gain a level in thrown weapons, and then gain a different, another level in submachine guns. And your total level is the sum level of all three of these weapon mastery levels. Like if I have a level I have level five pistols, level ten submachine gun level level five thrown weapons, I'm level twenty character. Ah. Damn it. Fucking RPG making me doing math. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you want to develop a lot your levels fast, you want to often like swap weapons between the characters so that they all use different weapons and get different and all get level ups in each weapon type so that because a level one of a weapon style is easier to get than level five of a different weapon style. So it's, it's all about trying to experiment and trying to figure out new ways to do things with the new late loadouts. And it's really fa- it's a really interesting game to play. I'm trying to but think you- that upon retrospect, I think part of the reason the game might have been so hard for me is that I spent money on clothes and hairstyles more than actual <laughs> weapon parts. <laughs> you see... Because for me, what I do, right, I, I basically exclusively use my money on, like, weapon parts in, in new guns and shit. Yeah, but there's so much cool hairstyles and clothes and I have, you can like, buy. I buy have a picture like, of a hamburger as a shirt. I have 150,000 <laughs> rupees, which is the game's currency, in my stash right now, just unspent because there's a weapon that costs $200,000 and I need to buy it. Oh, I don't know, Sam makes me want to play this game more than you do, bro. Dude, I, I, you I, like, one thing about me... Clothing, that you... I play with my guns. That's the thing, though, is that something people may or may not know about me is that I love character customization in RPGs more than anything. You love pretty dress-up. <laughs> like, that's the thing, is that I get super bummed if, like, you can customize <laughs> armor in a character and it doesn't change them visually, and if it does, it's the best thing in the world to me. So the fact that this is a JRPG anime style... Where I could dress up the characters whenever I want. Like, fuck yeah, man. You can, keep even, forever. you can even give them colored eye contact lenses. And the left and right eyes can have separate colored lenses if you want. Uh... Yep. And, there's, and there's even spray on hair coloring. Yep. You can use the dye your, your character's see, hair different colors. I should make like a short list of like games with heterochromia options. Be my favorite <laughs> games ever. <laughs> Bloodborne, number one. Two, Residents of Fate. And it, it it's really it's really cool to be able to just be characters like that, and uh, the cast is yeah really good. The main the main <laughs> cast of characters uh, Zephyr, Leanne, and Vacheron, who is voiced by Nolan North. They have dumb names, but their voice their voice acting is pretty great. Leanne's a normalish name. Yeah, it, it's actually kind of a weird thing in that like the script is kind of terrible and hilarious, and yet the voice actors are so good that. It mostly it's airs so towards camp. the hilarious than the terrible. It's so camp. Like, I guess what I mean is that if they were bad voice actors, this script would just be not fun. Yes. But it's like, yeah. the, we keep making the joke uh, earlier in the cast, or I believe it was before, we talked about this cutscene that you can look up on YouTube called All We Have Are Raisins. It's this <laughs> t- 
terribly <laughs> written cutscene, but the fact that Nolan North is doing it I know, makes it, it the best thing in the world. Because if you actually just read the dialogue, it makes no goddamn yeah, it, sense if whatsoever. You were to read, if you were to read a transcript, you'd be like, a 10-year-old wrote this. How would? Why would I ever want to see this? But it's but just, you... it's Nolan North <laughs> making jokes about, like, how he wants to... What was it like the bunker buster? If you're missile? gonna go into battle with those bunker busters, then don't be surprised if I retaliate with my magnum. Yeah, and he's doing like he's basically doing a little like dance where he's just kind of like sway, shaking his arms around and like like hopping around, and then he looks over to the girl and he's like, "But all we have are raisins." <laughs> and she just slaps him, and he just faces oh forward. He's like, "Okay, God." We'll go. <laughs> Like, I made and there's another scene earlier when uh, the power goes out in their, their home yeah, base. Chapter two. And Leanne screams because she's in the bathroom, and Zephyr goes in to check on her, and she immediately slaps him in the face as soon as he walks into the door. You don't see it on, on, on screen, but when you see him, and then Spashron tells him, Are you all right? And he walks out into the camera, and he has a huge red <laughs> handprint on his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, uh... it's like, and he's like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> so I feel like I just real quick, I want to I want to point that out just as far as the reason I actually like the humor in that game, because another thing people might know about me is that I hate fan service in the sense of like, as much as I love anime, I hate the whole thing of like, oh, no, you walked on me in the shower and you're seeing my almost completely naked body. Yeah. And I just I hate that because it's just yeah. for lack of a better word, it's a cock tease thing. It's just like, Cheesecake. why would I bother? Yeah. So what I love about Residents of Fate is that it's not, it's never visual. Like, it's all just wordplay and it's dumb all, humor. It's all innuendo. Yeah, so like, that's the great example of that, um, is that the idea that it's like, it doesn't show Leanne naked or like any like, almost naked scene or anything like that. It literally just shows Zephyr walking into the dark and then the sound effects. And I was like, that's the way to do it. Because yeah. it and is later on more that's... funny than just shameless nudity yeah. or something like that. It, and it's it's better to have that slap go off camera so that you can envision in your head just how that must have looked yeah. like. And they do have a joke later on in that cutscene that is also great, where yeah. uh, they like Leanne comes up and Zephyr and Vashon are talking about the power going out or whatever. And Leanne's like, "So what are you guys talking about?" And without missing a beat, <laughs> Vashon turns around and says, "Your rack." And then you just hear the black screen with the slap sound, and, and it shows the both of them back with red on the hand screen. Marks. When he comes back on the screen, God. he has another bright red handprint <laughs> on his face too. So it's the two of them leaning on the balcony, looking sad, with two red handprints on their face. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is the kind of Japanese humor I like. That's just and the best all this part, like, throughout that, in, throughout that entire chapter, in, like, the little in incidental dialogue between them in the middle of fight fights, yeah. they keep talking about that incident. Like, Vashiron's like, did you really, you really didn't see anything? And then Shepard goes, yes, I didn't see anything! <laughs> Well, they make a joke in that cutscene where, uh, because Zephyr's walking, he's like, how are you going to help her? He's like, I see really well in the dark. So the whole time with the dialogue, they keep making this joke where he was like, I heard you see really well in the dark. He's like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> and then Leanne keeps going like, did you really see anything? He's like, I didn't see anything. He could see really well in the dark. I didn't see anything. <laughs> And that happens, like Brandon said, what's great about it is it happens when you start up battles. Like, they actually pull that thread throughout the entire yeah, chapter. Yeah, you'll be flipping and spinning wow. and shooting your pistols and they'll be remarking about how Zephyr didn't see anything in the shower. Which is actually, like, one of the greater points about the game that I wanted to bring up with Brandon that I really like is the idea that not only are these characters not not just tropes, but I love the idea that these threads pull out throughout the game. Yeah. It's not just a cutscene with a joke. It actually like changes the way the characters act towards each other throughout the rest of the chapter yeah. and throughout the rest of the game. Like it actually has effect on them. It's not just a one-off thing. Which is no, what I about there are also a couple ones that just end up being overused a lot. Like for example, I see a lot, a lot, the one where Leanne goes, do you want me on offense or defense? And yeah. Ashron goes, Le Leanne goes both ways. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of like repeatable dialogue on that. Yeah. And there's a lot of ones where Leanne's like, Hey, I can fight well. And Zephyr's like, no, you can't. He, they stop doing that later in the later in in okay. like chapter six or seven because clearly she knows how to shoot at this point. <laughs> she's actually the best character out of my crew at I the know. moment because <laughs> she's always the one that kills the enemies, so she levels up faster. But that wow. that what like Trius in general, but that game especially is one of those cases of like you want to talk about underappreciated, underrated, underknown RPGs in the universe. It's that like Resident of Fate. Them. It is one of those of like nobody knows about this game, but the people who do will sing its praises forever. Yeah, and oh my god, it's such a great game. It's just a great universe. Like I love the idea of like 
I don't even know. It's not. It's not like and it's kind of like punk. post. It's post apocalyptic ish, where everybody lives on levels inside like a giant elevator sort of structure. Yeah, it's a giant tower. Yeah. So there's this idea, and like I haven't got far enough, but from what I talked to a friend of mine who had beaten it, there's also this idea of like machine gods and such. Yeah. And it's just like what a crazy universe. I'm starting to get to that point, but I do like the very steampunk aesthetic this game has. Yeah, it's super cool. Where you don't, there's no real magic, and it. it's just a lot of guns and grenades and explosive shit going on. Yep. And just really dumb humor with it hilarious script and no one so knows. like at no like at no point like nobody's using fucking swords in this or nothing it's no just, nope. everybody uses guns. well there are a couple of of like here of enemies that use officer swords characters never use like a bladed weapon they all use guns and throw in like grenades and molotov cocktails which which is thing is that actually goes for the enemies as well so if you're in there a are a couple position... enemies late game that like there's a dog that has a sword in his mouth and there are a couple of officers that use yeah. swords and, and close range but they all have guns as their primary yeah. weapons which I actually was, makes i was yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just to say, I just think that actually makes the combat interesting in that sense, because they have aspects yeah. of, like, you know, hiding a cover or using your running action to get behind certain areas and use throwables, because the enemies, they're, like, you're not overpowering them in the sense that you have guns and they don't. Like, they totally have guns, too, and grenades, and they will fuck you yeah. up. And they will the use them. Yes. Fervently. Because you have, you have to really get to know the mechanics, or you will lose a lot. Yeah, constantly. Like, it is something you have to definitely take your time to master. And the game tutorial is, is out of the way, so you had to like go to the arena and the yes. beginning of the game first to know the mechanic, which is a a bit of a ding on his part because it's really hard mechanics to learn. Yeah, and it unless only you're, gives you unless like, you're given instructions, and it gives you just like one one off message of like, hey, you can go to the arena to practice skills, but it doesn't say, hey, you should do this if you have never played the game before. Yeah, because it'll just throw you in with no tutorial otherwise. But anyway, sorry, Chris, what you were saying earlier? No, I mean, I kind of like the idea that a game that kind of realizes the idea that sword in a gunfight, guess what? I'm pretty sure the guy with the gun wins. Cause it's always <laughs> yeah. been a thing like anime, especially to where like, Oh yeah. Oh, swords are the baddest shit ever. It's like, guess what? I could pull out a gun and some <laughs> idiot with sword. I'm sure they are dead. And it's like, well, I can use the sword to reflect the bullet. Seriously. What are your chances of being able, of somebody being able to realistically hey, do man, that? I played metal gear rising. You just hold the ninja run button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I've yeah, got my second, a... I, I also have my second SMG in the game, so I'm doing a lot of damage really quick now because I have Zephyr dual wielding submachine guns. Because oh, it's like yeah. I, you know, I suspend my disbelief and everything when it comes to like you know bullshit movies and anime, and I just want to have dumb fun. But at the end of the day, you still think it like realistically, like, dude, come on, sword is not that good in combat. That's why we stop using them. We 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 fucking have we, we've mentioned gunpowder. Let's move on. Yeah, exactly. It's like you know. Well, I'm just gonna reflect Total this episode, bullets with gun my sword. Now, let's like, move on. You know, MGS being the exception. Yeah, if you're a fucking cyborg, you can deflect bullets all damn day. But I want to say that there was, if I remember correctly, there was the movie anime movie Sword of the Stranger. There was a lot about the changing times and how there was a guy who fought with a sword when people were using guns. If it's either that or a different film, but there's an anime film about that. And, and and there's even cool some more cool stuff about the combat system because each enemy also has individual body parts which you can an armor that you can shoot out one at a time. Kind of like and a, you, a vigor story almost. Yeah, yeah. It's and if it, you you definitely need to do that to keep your hero point gauge up or whatever the hell. Yeah, because whenever you do a, a, a running and jumping and flipping and shooting in the air, that costs a hero point. When you and do you the get hero move. points back. By killing enemies and or breaking off their armor or body parts. So it creates this sort of dynamic where if you're not killing enemies almost or breaking parts every turn, you're not doing it right. Like yeah. You, you have to constantly be doing damage to them. And that feeds hmm. into like the whole idea of scratch damage versus real damage, which scratch damage is basically just like you don't do any yeah. actual d damage to them, but then when you hit them with a regular bullet after scratching them, it'll do all yeah, of that if, damage. Like if I do just 50 through. scratch damage in SMG and then I shoot... The pist the pistol with ten damage that fifty scratch damage becomes sixty direct that all becomes sixty direct damage. Yeah. So but otherwise, uh, that scratch damage will eventually heal itself up over time. Yeah. So you can kill like enemies in one hit if you can scratch them up enough. That yeah. Sounds like something I'll check out though. It's amazing. Like it's not yeah, like it's I'm not really saying it's the best game. RPG ever, but it's just super cool and is worth it's playing really for anyone with a micro interest. It's something that's new or it's so try ace. Even at the time, <laughs> it was it's it at the time it was new and it's still kind of relatively newish now. 
Yeah, but it, it's just one of those things where, like, you look at RPGs of today, and even aside from, like, the whole retro revamp thing, even with new RPGs, they're all still doing menu-based combat systems. Yeah. Even action RPGs are more just, like, hack-and-slash games, whereas Trius right. always tried to counterbalance the two, yeah. or just throw it completely out the window and just do something new. And, uh, this is... and, and this game also has a leader system where if you kill, like, there are some, some enemies that are marked as leaders in a fight, if you kill them all, then the then the rest of the enemies get get cowardly and run away, and the battle is over. So, uh, so and... you can get some strategy in by just killing, focusing on the leader rather than worrying about all the lowly minions, and then the battle ends right there. Yeah. This is also on 360, so Garrett, you could also play this. Yeah, yeah. it was on 360. I forgot about that. <clears throat> yeah, worth playing. Highly recommended. And, it, uh... Mostly because it's so cheap at this point. It's so oh, yeah. yeah, it's a really I, I good game. I got it for. What was it on PSN? Five bucks on sale? Uh, on the uh, Golden Week sale was eight bucks. Yeah, I got it for eight then. That was worth it. Download copy. Definitely. And uh, the other game I was playing by myself this week was uh, I was playing through Dragon Guard Three. For those oh, actually, yeah. to be to be technical, I played it last week as well, but I didn't want to talk about it until Sam got onto the podcast. Well, thank you for that. I was just going to say, for uh, people who have been listening at least, I don't know, maybe like five episodes back or so, I recently started playing Drakengard, which is what started this whole resurgence yeah. of Drakengard interest between me and him. He's so I was like, hey, this universe is awesome, and then I told him about 3, and you were like, I haven't played 3, and I was like, you should play yeah. 3, and then you played 3. Yeah, because man, like, cause when I first saw it, it didn't feel like a Drakengard game, but now that I've played it, <laughs> it definitely does feel like a Drakengard game. <laughs> in the best way possible, I'm sure. In a, yeah. in a way... <laughs> definitely. Oh, well, I cannot remember the guy's name. It's like, I think it's Taco Ono, the creator. Like, it is just, like, that guy I mean, creates the most bizarre things in the not, universe. It's not exactly as dark as the first game was, but then again, if you compare anything to the darkness <laughs> in Drakengard 1, it's no comparison. It's the just... Joker is less evil than Drakengard <laughs> 1. What? Yeah, you're, the, the thing about Drakengard 1, you don't have to play very long to notice this at all, like literally like three missions, is that the protagonist is the worst character in the entire game. And the best oh. part in the sequel, he becomes the bad guy, but not because he's a different person, but because he's no longer the protagonist. Yep. Like the the basically the whole thing with one is I remember talking about the podcast is the idea that like you form a pact with a demon, in this case it was a dragon, and you lose your ability to speak. So the dragon is basically talking for you and it's a lot of like this commentary about ideology and war and stuff. But a lot of times she brings up the idea of like, you're kind of just a terrible person, aren't you? Like you're just slaughtering hundreds of people. It's suggested in lore that uh the the dra- the demon in the pact is the one that chooses what you lose in the in the pact. Oh, that would so, be like, the dragon chose to take Kaim's voice away from him. Think about yeah. that for a second. Yeah. But it, it's it's very interesting to hear the dragon talk, and she has these points where it's like, you're just killing hundreds of people, and she's like, all this for some kind of ideology that's so much bigger than you. And it's like, and yet you still do it. You just fight. Why? To save this one girl? Is it really worth it to kill, like, thousands of people? One girl who is your sister who you're also in love with. Yeah. No. It, yeah, it's that kind of game. Yeah, also, as people have pointed out, I it's I guess sort of a pseudo-spoiler, but people have pointed out to me before I even played it, is in Dragon Guard 1, you kill children, and they try to make you enjoy it. Uh... Yeah. It, that game a very, is dark. very dark game. Yeah, that, it's, it's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. like, you have, you have, like, three different party members, and they're all equally fucked up. Like, one, uh, and two of them that Sam has that I'm okay with spoiling... Yeah. You have a pedophile who's blind. That's the blind guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the blind guy who who lost his sight by having a pact with a fairy who hates him. Yeah, when you first meet the fairy, she's just like you're the it's like she's just like tearing him apart. It's just like you're the most sick, vile creature ever. You want to form a pact with me cuz you're just the worst person in the world. Like the dialogue literally goes like that. She's like, "You're so worthless. You have to form a pact with me." This sounds like this sounds like Final Fantasy if everyone was an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> like, kind of. <laughs> it's kind of just this really not nihilist, but just really cynical perspective on the universe that everyone is just the worst person and in the world. This other this world, everyone the, sucks. And then yeah. there's er, other character in your party who uh, who's a who's an elven woman whose village was destroyed. She makes a pact with an earth and water el- or a fire and water elementals in exchange for her. Fertility. Yep. They, I, I, I She's Brandon, also I like, a cannibal who loves children. 
Yeah, I asked, uh, I asked Brandon, I didn't understand how they could look at her and understand that she had lost her womb, but apparently that's what they took from her. Yeah, the pack partners choose what they take. It's really it's like It's like Final Fantasy meets Wanted. It's gra- so the, much... The, gra- the, <laughs> the graphic novel. It's the very so much dark, dark mean-spirited it's, graphic yeah. novel. It's so much darker than you think it is. <laughs> Even, like, the supposedly good character who's, like, your friend who's in love with the Princess Furie, like, his whole thing is he gets chained up, and then the demon starts talking to him, and he's like, if you just get stronger, you can love Furie all for yourself, you can have her. And it's, like, this almost, like, pseudo-rapey vibe towards her, it's like, you will control her entire life with power. <laughs> and it's, and he's like, he tries to fight it, but this whole thing of just, like, everybody's going after Furie, and I'm sure that that's not gonna end well for her in the end. I mean, I could spoil that, but I'm going to let you go through that nope. in- instead. That game, but just like, this is a game where, like, like, let's just do it again. This is a game of gray and black morality. No yeah. one is perfectly <laughs> virtuous in this game. Nobody. There's no what's good. Not even the six-year-old child is virtuous in this game. Is that the guy character in three? No, it's different. The, the, the other character you get is a different guy. Okay. No, say, I, I saw the cutscene that you showed me in the article is the same one that I've seen before, which is when the main character is killing her sisters, like they don't die easily. So some guy yeah. comes up to her and is literally shouting the same word, or it's not the same word, it's translated as the same word, but he's basically saying, like, you know, bitch, whore, whatever, just like all these drugs yeah. while well, just stamming a knife into her over and over and over. And you yeah. look at the mutilated body and it's just a pile of guts. And it's just like, because they don't die easily, so it's just like, I'll just keep stabbing her until she's dead. And it's like, it's so bloody. Yeah. And Zero's, the main character Zero is just like, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, she she's also there to kill the good woman that's her there, goal. so. Yeah, that's what you yes. started out. Speaking of the game, I was playing Dragon Guard 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's your whole setup for this universe. Nothing is happy and everyone is the worst. <laughs> Every character yeah. is the worst character in Dragon Guard. Yeah, like where where is Drakengard One felt like a dis like a deconstruction of every fantasy trope you've ever used and, and and how it explains basically why they're all horrible. Like for example, what kind of person would be great with killing a bunch of random soldiers? This not, asshole from yeah, Dragon Guard who just One. Give a shit. It's not like a virtuous hero, or it's not even someone with gray morality. It's just someone who doesn't care for human life. In any regard. Yeah, whereas Drakengard 3 kind of assumes you, you're expecting that. <laughs> and in the first, like, in the first ending trail, they kind of just, like, play off that. But the more endings you get, the more layers you break down, the more you realize this is not that same story. They're actually kind of subverting the things that you'd expect from a Drakengard game, which is actually really fascinating. Yeah, I heard um, when the IGN review came out, they apparently gave it a bad score and they played through only the first ending. Yeah, and th- there was a whole bunch of f- things from fans going like, "Dude, you can't just play the first ending yeah, of any Dragon Guard, Guard game. game. Cannot be like you cannot just end it in the first ending if you're playing a Dragon Guard game. Yeah. You have to at least go through three, <laughs> if not all five. <laughs> if not or all of them. There are four endings in Dragon Guard um three. Okay, I, I there think are... there's five in the first one. Yes, there are. Yeah, and they all get worse every time. Yeah, although they definitely they don't tend to get as nihilistic in Dragon Guard three. Which... Oh, good. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> they actually do end up getting kind of better-ish. It still it still ends up going from from like bittersweet to different shades of bittersweet, but like, yeah, it's not as completely dark as Dragon Guard One was, which is appreciated because some there's only so much darkness one can take from one franchise. <laughs> I was also going to ask three: Is three a prologue to one? I three remember, takes or place pre- prequel. I mean. Three takes place before one does, like hundreds of years before. Okay. Yet none of the endings of that game actually lead into Dragon Guard One. Huh. So I was gonna say, is there any kind of relation that you can pull up between the two, or anything at all between like characters or countries? Not or is there really. anything referenced, or is it Not just like really? No. I was gonna say, is this like kind of like a near thing where it's like it's in the same universe, really? But it's not necessarily even like the same world. Oh my god! And because of the, the kind of ultimate reality, because Drakengard lore kind of subscribes to the multiverse theory. Oh great, that's what I needed to understand. So like <laughs> they explain all different endings by like having some characters, they're just able to like if something bad happens, they can go back to a previous point in the timeline and do like a what if scenario that like, branches out of that. In both Kaim and uh, Zero from Dragon Guard Three are two types of the, or two of those characters that can just branch off into different realities. 
So Dragon Guard's weird, man. Yeah, I, man. Like, like, oh, there's so much to this game. Like, it's, it's as it's almost as bad as Kingdom Hearts and trying to explain what's going on. But it's yeah, just that's more not. weird. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, my my big thing with Dragon Guard, you know, I've seen gameplay footage of it and stuff. Like, how like how is the combat and everything? Because I mean, this is okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's not great. It's different Dragon from Guard one. Three is a bit better because whereas Dragon Guard one was like a poor man's Dynasty Warriors, Dragon Guard three is more like a a poor man's Devil May Cry. <laughs> Which you know that's saying a lot as far as different, more interesting combat. Yeah, so it, even Poor Man's Devil May Cry is still a decent game, even yeah. if it's not great. Yeah. Although well, I, I, I mean, obviously. It's it's something that's gonna hold your interest is you have to get like five different fucking endings, so Yeah. And um Ugh. I'm not going to finish the last ending to Dragon Guard three for almost the exact same reason <laughs> I didn't finish the first the, the final ending of Dragon Guard one. Just because in both endings there is this sudden shift from the dynasty from like the combat you you see from the rest of the game into this rhythm game. I can't what? You're playing Guitar Hero. Bust now, out your controller. I, I, I cannot explain the, the justification for this because it will be spoilerific. I'm but sure it's insane. It's, it's completely batshit bonkers. And even the dragon in, in that, in, from Dragon Guard 1 in that ending is just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Can't wait till I get to finish that game. But uh, in, in both games, there's a rhythm game that's, like, really hard at the end where one, like, false move is an instant game over. Shit. In the first game, it was two and a half minutes long of one, one move is, one wrong move is game over. And that was something I couldn't really do as a child and I, or as a teenager, I suppose. So I just kind of gave up on it because it was getting too frustrating. Fast forward to Dragon Guard 3, it is also a rhythm game except... And it is one hit game over, except the rhythm game is eight minutes long. Jesus Christ. That guy don't care at all about your free time. And the farther you get into the song, the more bullshit things they throw at you to make sure you miss a beat. For example, they will move the camera away from the notes. But you can't see it, you have to hear the timing. (laughs) <laughs> then they'll start adjusting the timing of the notes. I love and the e- book. And <laughs> even better, once the screen has begun to fade to black and the ending monologue occurs, there is one more note after that that you can't see because the screen is faded to black already. This- and if you miss that, <laughs> go back to the fucking start, you <laughs> evil ass noob. <laughs> It's like this Dark sounds Souls. Like, this, this sounds like if fucking Andy Kaufman made a game. <laughs> like this... <laughs> and what? I hated it the first time, and I hate it more in this time, so I I tried for like five times to do it, and I was like, fuck it, I'm not finishing this one like, this either. This is some anti-comedy shit. This is... It's great! <laughs> I just watched it on YouTube, but then I saw what was going on. I'm like, there is no fucking way, bro. That's not happening. I'm not doing that. It's not gonna happen. No way. No, oh, never. Oh my god. I am so excited to do this when I get to three. <laughs> if you beat it, I'm gonna just. Lift. I'm not even gonna like be angry. I'm just gonna feel sorry for you for yeah, doing that. Yeah. I'm gonna beat it because I am a known masochist who plays Dark Souls over and over. So it's gonna happen. I've been, we talked about it off the podcast, but I've been playing Hatsune Miku Project Diva F for like, I don't know, 50 hours between the two games. I've been preparing my whole life mm. for this moment. Yeah, you might have a good chance at it. Like, I won't even feel bad. I'll just feel. I, I won't even feel mad. I'll just feel sorry for you, dude. If you do that, because I, be great. I can't fucking do that shit, man. I can't do it. I, you know what I should? I should definitely have like the Elgato set up when I'm playing three and just have the yeah. microphone hooked up. And that way, just like, it'll have like some random commentary when I'm playing the game. No, 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 the podcast. I, should be, I should be with you on Skype, mocking you as you do it. <laughs> I just want to get to the very end, have the microphone just happen to be plugged in while it's recording and just record my candid commentary <laughs> while I'm replaying it over and over. <laughs> 
Oh god, I, I have a feeling we could probably go on all day about the fucking... But aside from those two yeah. games, the other thing I did this week is, uh, <laughs> of course, Sam, Chris, my friend, Ryu, and I Aww. got together for another round of Insomniac Games' is Fuse! <laughs> Fuse version 1.0. Yep. No need for a patch because it it's is It's such perfect. a perfect game. There are no flaws whatsoever. Oh nope. god. <laughs> yeah, so we got to play what? We played the second half of the first level after our systems all collectively locked up. Which yeah. I don't know how that even happens. Well, which... to be fair, it was just you and Chris. Ryu and that's I still fine. like that's incredible. It's only that half. Si- it's only half of the group. But you're talking about systems locking yes. up based on an yeah. online connection. That yes. seems like something that Sony would say this game cannot ship because it is bricking PS3s. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Although, thankfully, our PS3s were not bricked. They just happened to yeah. lock up, and then we had to restart. But the fact that and... it happened to both of us is incredible. Yeah. I, I have to wonder how that happened. I don't know. Don't fucking know, but... So I hosted it, and we played the second half of the first level and the whole of the second level. Yeah, yeah there, there's and a lot of robots. Trucked it. Yeah, and it was okay, I guess. Fine. Once you get the fuse powers, it becomes a lot better. Oh, yes. yeah, that, yeah, the second level is where we got all our powers, so, like, you know, we have the cloak power, like, I was able to throw medical beacons yeah, across and, the room. And I can perform sneak attacks with my invisible cloak. Yeah, Chris could deploy portable shields that he could, like, slam into the ground as opposed to just have to hold, and... And oh, really yeah. got shat with the most boring character yeah. in the game. He just has crossbow bolts that blow up. Yeah, yeah. he has, like, the charge shot on his crossbow yeah. bolts, like... Oh, I mean, I, got, that's, I feel bad, man, because I can throw freaking medical. I could revive people across the room. I thought that was pretty sick. Yeah, and Ryu just gets the boring ass crossbow. Of course, the black man gets the most boring weapon in the game. Oh, God. Oh. But, like, yeah, and I know I bitched because it seemed kind of stupid that Dalton's thing is he has this fucking shield that he carries around. No, now I can just pop one in front of me whenever in front of my buddies and keep firing. Now I felt like the game really began. Yeah, it really does when you get those powers. Like, it actually adds a dynamic to the game that didn't exist yeah. before. And I feel like I mean, we should point... it still ends up with you only using your fuse weapon and no other weapons in the game for most of it. Yeah. I, mean, uh, yeah. I, I feel like we should point out, though, the best set of dialogue in the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> I'm trying to think of... We have to probably set up the cutscene for everybody. Okay, like... I'm going to set the scene for you guys. So picture. we all enter this large antechamber, and then Love Allie it. Harris, as as lightning, <laughs> hacks into it, and then we find this huge clump of fuse. Right. Once that happens, then Dalton's old girlfriend from his previous life as a merc comes out and threatens the center that we rescued earlier in that mission. Yeah, like knocked to the throat, kind of threat. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. before you Threatens. even get to that, before you oh. even get to that, you have to remember, like when they go into that thing and uh, uh, Ali Harris's character Izzy, she's hacking the thing. She's like, you know, oh something's dated from 1947. What is in here? And Dalton's like, I don't care what it is. I'm not paid enough to give a shit. I don't care if it's <laughs> Walt Disney's head in there. Right. And then they open Specifically, it. Specifically, he says Walt Disney's head. Yeah. Yes. He totally says that. <laughs> and and then they open it and it's like this fusion core thing what have you. I don't know, fucking glowy energy bullshit. Yeah, whatever. And, it's it's called fuse. Yeah, yeah. and uh Ryudakun's character, Jacob, just basically says, That does not look like Walt Disney. Like <laughs> in the most like in, in the, the mo- in the most like <laughs> In the most like, genuinely almost, surprised tone of voice. Yeah. Well, like I was, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this, but kind of like stereotypical comedy black man voice. Who's like, that don't look like Walt Disney's head. And I was like, like he seemed genuinely surprised that it wasn't the head of Walt Disney. <laughs> like he was believing Dalton. He was like, I can't like, believe it's not Walt Disney. Head. Like it could, it could only be worse if he was voiced by Chris Tucker. I'm like, man, that don't look like Walt Disney, man. Like. Oh, God. <laughs> and then after that, when we have this woman with the Senate with the senator at knife point, right? Dalton go. Dalton puts his points his gun at the senator, and then the the black guy goes, "What are you doing?" And then Dalton you goes, "Taking away his leverage." And then the black guy goes, "You can't shoot a senator." And then Dalton goes completely deadpan, 
What? Uh, I didn't I did vote, vote for, for him. him. Yeah, like that's, that's the best line in the whole the game. Guy, <laughs> the guy you're paid wow. to secure. Now you're just about like I'm gonna shoot him. Vote for him. For him. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. Oh god. Like, if the, like if that he really was sound, a moment. Like if he like, did look I, like an insufferable prick, <laughs> that might have been an okay line. Like it might be funnier to us because or if we he had, had a bit of. Or if he felt like he was do he was saying that like with a bit of snark and humor, but he's completely like dead faced. Mm. Like when I he like, says that to the point I, where it seems too cold. Part of the humor for us might just be that we had already been playing that game for like an hour and a half, and we had already realized <laughs> how bad the script was. But like, if you watch the cutscene, you'll get at least part of what we're saying because yeah. oh my god, it is incredible. <laughs> Of course, you probably just look. I imagine, I imagine just like if you play a shit game for an hour and you see a decently humorous line, then you're gonna start busting out laughing because yeah. it's the most fun you've had in that past fucking hour. Oh, oh man, dude, dude, that's. I mean, some of the fun we had, Sam wasn't even around for when. <laughs> yeah, he, like... Sam had to go with his go with his friend and talk about <laughs> monitors and shit, and and he said, and we just said, you can go, or we'll just find some way to entertain ourselves the next half an hour or so. Yeah, like, we were, we, like, we started the second mission, and we were in, like, this hallway area. This prison uh, cell complex. Y yeah, and... And so there's we were just this, like, there. group of lasers in the back wall. Yeah. And we found that when you touch them, you don't take you don't take enough damage to get hurt, because you'll heal up real fast. But you'll get pushed back, noticeably. And you get thrown back. Yeah, you, you get, like, thrown back like it. you hit a force field when it's just a bunch of lasers. And... And we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, me, you, and Rudakun were just throwing ourselves into it. And at one point, I discovered that, like, every time you do a melee attack, you kind of thrust forward. So, like, me and Ryu started doing what we called a punching race, where we were just, we were mashing <sighs> the melee button, just seeing who could get to the end of the hallway first. Yes. What a beautiful game. And we got, so, we got, like, ten times more fun out of that than we, by all rights, should have. Derek, this game is on 360. You can... See this madness for yourself. Yeah, get a couple God. of friends that'll somehow <laughs> crazy enough to play it with you. What? I didn't vote for him. Uh. <laughs> I don't care if it's Walt Disney's head in there. You got Again, confused, like if, right? if there yeah. was if there was any hint yeah. of humor All in right. the voice he was using, that might have been an acceptable line. But he does it so coldly that it it just sounds so awkward. Oh man. It's, it's the delivery that's wrong, really. And the tone. The tone is terrible. Oh, yeah. It's... Uh... Oh, that game. Oh, man. Oh, and, then, and, then that's, and then in the section after that, uh. like, all of our characters, one by one, just started get, like getting hallucinations because the enemy were talking... Oh, we were right. Fighting. Now, that actually was kind of interesting, the way they did that. Yeah, the enemy we were fighting had injected himself with the fuse and gained psychic power as a result for plot reasons but every, every single like area of the game one of us would start kneeling down and to everyone else we were just kneeling down convulsing in pain but to us our character was having an interactable flashback which is really interesting yeah, yeah. like like to to the point where you could be moving around in this entirely separate off area while your buddies just see you crouch down in pain yeah so it's it's difty. It's difty. <laughs> uh, I, I although I think it would have been it would have been funnier <laughs> if we could still interact in full three D space after having the hallucination, and then just like watch our character like bump into laser beams and like knock back <laughs> while we're having the flashback. Yeah, <laughs> that's a terrible idea, but it would have been funny. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm sure we could go on all day. <sighs> yeah. But... That was my week when, with my buddies playing Fuse. When we, uh -huh. when we finish that game eventually. So Chris, what the fuck uh, have you been doing this week? Uh, so I guess kind of uh, in the interest of time, as well as you know, I'm I'm still in that uh, magical place called in between jobs, to where oh what a magical world. Yeah, I'm preparing it's a to great leave. time to play games. So yeah, I'm preparing. Well. It's only aggravated by the fact of I'm um, as I'm preparing to leave one job and enter into another. I'm also <laughs> being forced to move because if I don't, that is going to be at a two and a half hour commute, and nobody wants that. So, but 
one thing that I did do, and this was actually not too long before we started today, was so Nintendo over the weekend did this whole thing called the Global Test Fire for Splatoon. And yes. what this was was that, you know, you could download this free demo and it was online only. And the thing that sucked was they only had the servers up for three whole hours of the entire weekend. And I don't mean three hours straight. What they did was Friday, there was one designated hour. And then Saturday, here's one designated hour from like 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Pacific time. And then I did I did the last one not long ago, which was like, for me, it was like from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. So... And I only played around for, with it for like 45 minutes. And the uh, like the most I could say was they make you do a tutorial, which, you know, it, it, it controls like a fucking first-person shooter, but it's in third person. So what have you. Call it what you want. But um, the thing was, the controls by default, and, and I'm not going to say like, you know, oh, beta, whatever. No, this game comes out at the end of the month. So I'm pretty certain that this is what the, the final product is most likely going to be like. And the controls by default, when you're using the gamepad, uh, they have you use motion controls for aiming. So, to where you can move around with the left stick, but your up, down, and left and right are controlled by moving that gamepad around. Which feels a little awkward at first. And, uh, like they have one button de designated... Uh, what? That was, a, that was a noise. Uh, there was a motorcycle just driving off in the background. <laughs> I apologize. Nice. Well, I can cut that out. But but no, they have one buzzin button designated on the gamepad just for recentering yourself. So like, if you want to hold the gamepad in a certain position that's easier for you to look around with it, you just push that and it recenters. But what's weird is that while you... You can only look up and down by moving the deep uh, by moving the whole thing. You could still turn left and right with the right analog stick. And thank God, after you complete the tutorial, you can turn motion controls off. Then play it like a shooter, like every other fucking game in the world, um, to where it's like good. Now I look and move around with both sticks. Uh, and you know, triggers triggers do what you expect them to, with the exception of the left one because. Right trigger, that's to fire your paintball gun. And the left trigger, uh, you don't aim down the sights at all in this. Because why the fuck would you? This is a game where ammo is not really an issue. You have like a tank on your back that signifies how much ink you have. Which, by the way, I kind of like that idea. Uh, I, I, I always dig it when games find a way of, like, rather than having something that's explicitly right there in the HUD, it's you see, like, an indicator that's, like, built onto your character to where it almost looks contextualized. So to like see how much... Dead Space? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like that. Like, the character has, like, a, a tank on their back for how much, like, paint they have or ink, and that's basically your indication of, like, how much you have. And then, you know, you run out of it, you can recharge it either by just standing there and letting it recharge slowly, or you swim through the various ink that is splattered across the map to recharge it quickly. And that's what the left trigger does. The left trigger lets you transform into a little squid person. and Well, you're already a squid person, but it transforms you into a squid, and you can swim in the, in the paint. Although, granted... I just, I just want you to think about that sentence you just said. The left trigger turns you into a squid. And you swim through paint. So, yep, so yep. you can swim through paint, this, yeah. Video games are certainly happening. I, You know what? When we think about the fever dream that dreamed up Super Mario Brothers of... Uh, you're in the Mushroom Kingdom, and you go through pipes, and you eat mushrooms to get bigger, it's and you stomp on turtles. It's a metaphor for drugs! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I just realized that! No, I didn't. Wait, you just realized that? No, I didn't. That would oh, be no. a great moment in my life. <laughs> I would uh, I would just be so happy. I had a similar uh, epiphany when I watched Pokemon, I realized that Tracy was the guy that drew things. I was about to say <laughs> god there was a uh, someone did a video of like how games in the 80s and 90s like were made and it's just a group of people getting stoned like oh my god and then like at the end he uh out of the room and he sees the plumber or like the the, the janitor dressed i as can Mario just imagine goes, oh, like Shigeru miyamoto just looking at his friend and go bro like what if there was a guy who got bigger when he ate mushrooms <laughs> just like I, my I, buddy I, I have to find it it was 
uh, was it cracked or was it was something? It was some so fucking was look at Activision somewhere. back. Yeah, look at Activision back in the early '80s. You'll hear some shit. You'll. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Splatoon like. That's really the big draw of this game is that your gun is not just used to shoot other dudes, but you're literally painting the map with your color of ink, and then you can swim in it. It's also kind of funny, like, you turn into a squid by holding the left trigger, which makes it really quick to switch back and forth. Uh, but, like, if you're just on, like, dry land and you turn into a squid, you're just kind of flopping there, which is kind of funny. But, um... But, like, you turn into a squid, and you can swim through ink, which has a kind of interesting dynamic to it of, like, if you just sit there, pe- other people wouldn't be able to see you. And, you know, your teammates, they can see you, but other players couldn't. And if you're just swimming along, it'd be also a little bit difficult for them to see you as well. So, But the other big tactical thing about that is if you paint an entire wall, you can swim up the wall. And that's actually how you get around, and it's kind of an interesting kind of platforming mechanic with that. You know, it's like if Call of Duty allowed a wall hack, you know? Just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it seems really interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what the, the full game is like. I mean, and granted, uh, the one multiplayer mode that we were able to play was what they call Turf War, which is, the objective is, a, uh, the objective is simply, you want to get your team's color to paint the more of the map than the other team. That's it. Like the objective really isn't to kill as many, uh, get as many kills as you can. No, it's really just about painting the other side of the map, uh, painting the map with your color more than the other team. Hmm. And it's not just designated areas. It's like the, the whole fucking map paint it all. And while it seems a little silly at first, cause like I, I thought it felt a little slow pace to where I'm just kind of, <laughs> walking around shooting the walls and stuff. But what's interesting about it is like when you get killed and you want to just get back into the action of it, depending on how, how much of the area is colored in your team's ink, you can move around faster, you know, kind of like, kind of like if Titanfall had, you know, there's a thing with like shooters nowadays to where mobility is what's really good about making the gameplay faster that you can move quicker and you can get around areas. Yes. And Splatoon is really all about that too. Because that's what makes it great about painting the whole area as much as you want because it allows you to move around the map quicker. <clears throat> but if the other team has their paint in an area, you're kind of fucked. Because it will slow your ass down. And it will kill you. Uh, so, it's almost kind of this double-edged sword of like somebody can do well in a game without getting a single kill. But also, when like you know, a game like this, especially for somebody like me that's played a lot of multiplayer games like this, is like you instinctively want to like find people and take them out, like like that. But but at the same time, like the platforming stuff, I think works really well, and I'm interested to see like what more of the more of the other game modes are, um, you know, because they're gonna have like ranked playlists and stuff like that. But yeah, like th- having that kind of mobility though is super cool, I think. Yeah. Um. I think mobility is the future of shooters. <laughs> yeah, it was the past, well. but now it's the future again. Yeah, we, we've got like really hardcore to physics and slowing down and stuff. Everything and goes decide, in cycles. Yeah, that. Yeah. And the and the the kind of parallel to this, you know, is, if uh, you know, is kind of a tangent. Is like you have shooters that are trying to focus on being faster and allowing the player to move more quickly across the map. And the thing was, like back in the early days, that's what it already was. Just yeah. Motherfuckers slowed it down with this Do you modern remember military the original shit. Half Life. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Unreal Tournament. Yeah, yeah. it's like pads. it's like your character is wearing jet boots. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. And then fucking Call of Duty happened, slowed all the shit down, as well as like Medal of Honor, and it's like well, it was an attempt to be more quote unquote realistic. Yeah, which at the time we wanted. Like it all makes sense in that period yeah. of time. Like, it makes time, sense in context. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, it was more of an outlier, but then it was like everything was like that. Yeah. Like everything was slowing down, and everything was like, uh, so it's nice to. So now it's kind of a breath of fresh air that everything is kind of moving quickly, <laughs> and like I would not call Splatoon a Twitch game, but it's the the platforming mechanics that they put into it. I think really do make it a lot more interesting. 
Because if you didn't have that, this would be kind of boring. Uh, but being able to transform into a squid, swim around and stuff, you move very quick. And uh, because it's just a matter of holding the left trigger, it's really intuitive how, like, you can... Like, I was kind of... I, I thought it was kind of cool of, like, swimming through, like, there'll be ramps. You can paint the ramp and just kind of swim and speedboat off of it. And then transform back in midair and start shooting dudes before you hit the ground. Like, I, I thought that was pretty dope. So, that game's kind of out this month. I don't know if I'll get it at that time, but I'm stoked for Splatoon. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, like I said, I haven't had too much time to do much else. Uh, and uh, I was kind of glad I got to squeeze in time with that. But uh, I think for now, That'll probably do it for the show, uh, as always. This is going to be at least a three-hour podcast. Well, yeah, but I think we've, 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 you know, we've carried it pretty well. Um, yes. As always, uh, if you want to email us, ask us a question, send us a comment or story or what have you, feel free to do so at thetexturepop at gmail.com. You can also tweet at us at thetexturepop, or you can follow us, you know, separately on Twitter, whatever you like to do. Um... Of course, Brandon, you've got some new stuff going up on your right. website. Uh, Jack and Guard 3 has this weird problem where it tends to lampshade its bad game design. So I wrote an <laughs> article about why that's a bad idea. And, and of course, it's, up, it's up now on my site, and you can check ice. it out yep. when you get the chance. And, of course, we got links to Sam's site, to Empty Skybox. And, yep. uh, Things also will be happening link. there eventually. Working on that. And also a link to Garrett's stream channel, Twitch TV channel. You want to watch him play some stuff? Totally. Yeah, can. eventually. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. And until I effing move, I'm probably not going to be doing much else. So, uh, this is the texture think, pop signing off. Yeah, I hey, I what, get what? the sign off. Damn it! We got like another hour to go. Come on, Brandon. Shut Get up. ready. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you both. Let's talk about Dragon Guard again, because why okay, not? So I'm going to punch this, you. The beginning of Dragon Guard. I'm two. going to punch. I'm your going face. to punch you in the soul. If, if your life had a face, I'd punch it in the balls. I mean. <laughs> uh, but thanks for listening in, folks, and we'll be sure to catch you next week. Stay tuned Goodbye, for the everybody. anime podcast after show. Three hours of nonstop anime talk. This is not Giant Bomb. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Get hype. Not on not, camera. Uh, I'm yeah. ending this. <laughs>